How's it going, everybody? Happy Thursday. Oh, man, it's going to be a good show. The best of movies and TV 2022. I got two great guests here in both John Roca, Dan Merle. They're in studio with me. We're going to talk about all those things. We're going to go over this big list that we came up with. And we're going to just pick a bunch of different movies and TV over the year. We're going to talk about it in depth. So I'm glad you're joining us here today for that particular thing. Now, look, we have a lot to talk about. But before we do, make sure head on over to that merch store, man. We got the big thing show. We got the Sith Council. We got show some class. We got all of it. We got all of it. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, come on, show a little class. Will you do that? Apple Podcast, Spotify, anywhere podcasts are found. Head on over there. Do it. All right. No more talking. Let's get to the big thing. It's me. It's Roka. It's Dan. Let's do it. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. It's the big thing. And as you have seen, up top, and even in that little, little corner right there, and you've seen it every Monday, but on this Thursday episode, really excited to be working with Carbon Health. Carbon Health sponsoring this entire episode here. Carbon Health. You know about Carbon Health. Well, you should know about Carbon Health. Now, if you've been watching the show long enough, you know that Carbon Health has got over 120 plus locations that handle urgent care, COVID, RSV, and flu testing and vaccinations. But what people should be looking into is how they're expanding into primary care services that include Connected Health. Now, what is Connected Health? It's the idea that our health isn't just about our bodies, but also our mind. Carbon Health's providers, they come connected with mental health specialists as well. So Carbon Health will be expanding these primary care services further in 2023. If you're in Massachusetts, you're going to be able to access the Connected Care next month since it's now expanded from California to Massachusetts. Carbon Health, it's an excellent urgent care and testing center, but don't sleep on their primary care services. We're very excited to be working with Carbon Health. We have been. We're excited that they're going to be sponsoring the show and also to giving us this opportunity to hang out with my boys, John Roca. Hello. Dan Merle. Hello. The gang's back together. Look at this. Look at this. We're back. Can, we, can we stop being serious now? Jesus Christ. Stop being serious? I mean, Cheese health, and rice. 120 per- Do the Massachusetts accent. I like this idea. I don't have a Massachusetts accent. You don't accent. have a Boston accent? What are you We're talking New Yorkers. about? We have to have Boston accents. Yeah, but it's like, you know, you get in the car. Get in the ca- cabin health. Get in the car. Dan, go for it. Cabin. <laughs> cabin. You're cabin health. Come on. Get, in the, get there. Um, all right. So. This was fun because we've been talking about this for all. You and I were talking about doing something for a bit. Yeah. Dan's able we're to. We're still talking about it. <laughs> so, well, Dan's, Dan's here and, you know, able to come into to town. And we're like, well, let's do it. Let's do it in the studio. And um, and we'll talk about the best of. There's tons of stuff to talk about. Yeah. I mean, there really is. We had a. 2023 is going to be insane when it comes to movies and oh TV. My God. Yeah. I did a preview episode that's going up on the channel later this week. And I was listing everything out. And I'm like. What the hell? Yeah. Like the, yeah. There's no, I mean, on, a, on the flip side, that's great. On the bad side, it's like, how much of this stuff's going to flop? Because it's every week. It's like week after week after week. It's like right. people aren't going that often. Well, it's remember crazy. summer of 2019 where things right fell on top of each other yeah. the whole time. It was like, how, how do you even have a chance to breathe? Or pick of the stuff that you want to watch. So and yeah, now there's the, so the, the backup from a few things that weren't doing, like the right. stuff that could stop production, and now it's all done, and they're really, it's, yeah. it's crazy. Plus it, all the film, uh, TV stuff as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. All the TV stuff and all that, because yeah. TV changed the game. And that's that's the thing, is that for 2023, is that I think that we get back into when we were in 2018, 2019, before the pandemic, release after release yeah. after release, and the yeah. and the, the business was booming. Then obviously nothing in 2020, right. limited in 2021. And 2022 started to see that peak back where you get like one major release in a month, yeah. maybe two, but like the big releases really just one. Next year, starting like February, March, it's like boom, 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 yeah. boom. Plus, as you mentioned, the TV shows, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So we had a lot of great TV this year. And we had a lot oh, of yeah. great movies that yeah. popped out. So we're going to start the way we're going to do it. So as I mentioned... We're going to, I'm going to, we have this whole list. I'm going to throw it to one of the guys. They don't know. Oh, and we're going to have this list back and forth of where we're going to start. We could start movies. We could start TV. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it in depth. Now, not guaranteeing that if I bring up a movie that John and Dan might not have seen or vice versa. So we're going to start and I'm going to start. 
John Roken. Yeah. Oh. John, we're going to go, we're going to start with oh, movies, boy. man. You got you got a whole list of movies here. You can talk about any movies you want to talk about. This is the, the best of list, something you really, something that stood out, something you enjoyed, something you really wanted to talk about, well, whatever. There, there was this uh, Thai film, uh, The Cow's Left Leg. No, I'm joking. It's a great I'm movie. I've seen with, it. It's great. <laughs> I'm starting with Top Gun Maverick. How can I not start with Top Gun Maverick? I mean, I have been a massive Top Gun defender since that film first came out back in 1986. It changed my life as a teenager. It taught me that, hey, you could find a way to be smooth with ladies and just incredible flying going on, the action, the cinematography, the late great Tony Scott directing this thing, great companionship, and it's the beginning of Tom Cruise. So to come back 30 years later and deliver a sequel like this when so many other sequels that have gone back or that have been delivered and have, there's a lot of time has passed, they haven't always worked. Dumb and dumber, I'm looking at you. This one really worked. And it gave you pathos. It gave you vulnerability. It gave you, dare I say it, gravitas to a character like Maverick who you really didn't anticipate would be there. His chemistry with Jennifer Connelly and bringing in who they brought in here with all these new actors that they brought in to essentially build the team all over again it was incredible, and it made one and a half billion dollars. Yeah, it started off, um, and remember, you know, you just said it took thirty years, yeah. and it, it probably could have taken two years less had, uh, yeah, had, yeah again right, because of the pandemic right. and all that. I remember seeing a trailer for this thing at Comic Con in twenty nineteen or whatever Dude, it was. Riley and, and I did a trailer reaction, a collider. Well, that's what I'm saying. And, yeah, we, and the, we covered the first trailer yes. on Screen Junkies <laughs> News, <laughs> right? That's and then I reviewed the movie this year. That's, well, that's, that's how long it took that movie to come out. And right? that's a testament, though. To Tom Cruise, yes. right. because yes, that n not yet, okay, <laughs> because you because were, because right. at first Tom Cruise was he was pre getting pressure. Yeah, hey man, we don't know when this movie's gonna come out. We don't know how long the pandemic's going. We got to put this on Paramount Plus. It can do big business. He's like, no chance. Oh, good point. No yeah, chance right. because Paramount was every, like everybody was panicking, going, let's put it. All of our big releases got to put them out. No, yeah. Tom Cruise has that type That's of true. gravitas to <laughs> say no, thank you, but um, let's put it out there and. What a smart decision it was because the thing with this movie, like I love the first movie and yeah. I, I don't necessarily know if the first movie transfers over today the way it did when we saw it no, as no, kids, no. right? It's a different time. I it, can tell you from a lot of patron reactions and stuff, like people like it, but it, it does not. It yeah, doesn't yeah. hold over which the same. Fine, it, which it, it, that's fine, it, that happens. It's a yeah. very 80s movie. Yes. yes. And it oh, has yes. the tone of the 80s is what it was intended for at the time, but it doesn't hold up. This movie, I remember saying, because people are like, I don't know, I don't like the first one. Like, you don't need to like the first one. No, this movie, don't. what I really enjoyed about it was that it took it it really reminded me of why I like going to the movies. Mm. It got me back to that feeling. It has emotion. It has like it's got a good character build. It focuses, it does what Cobra Kai does very well also, by the way. It's like it focuses on the legacy characters. Yeah. But it also now puts some spin on these on a new generation that brings in a newer audience. I think it's a gorgeous score. I think that it's it, oh, in yeah. general, it's just a it it is one of my favorite movies in the last like five or ten years. I really enjoyed it well, a lot. The filmmaking is what I cause I put out my list of best and least favorite favorite movies of the year today and and you know so if anyone hasn't seen it i won't spoil it but this movie's on that list right the best list or, or favorite and one thing that i said is there's this you know there's not all folks but some folks that generate these lists it seems like when they're looking at the movies if it's got a budget above x or if it made above x yeah, box office, yeah. they're like well no i don't include that and it's yeah. like well but wait a minute like right. because <laughs> like even if you take the story part out of it which I don't think that it's a bad story, but from a technical aspect, the, the craft of it, the filmmaking of that movie is incredible. Yeah. Uh, sound design, cinematography, score. I mean, just on that alone, it is one of the best made films of the year. And then you put on top of that, this is one of my favorite things about it that all these legacy sequels don't always do is, yes, you're bringing back these characters, but right. you give them something to do. Yeah. They didn't just bring back Maverick right. to just be in the movie. They right. didn't just bring Iceman to just be in the movie. Right. They have a function in the yeah. movie yeah. And, a, and a payoff, and there's a relationship there. It's an actual follow-up to the previous movie and not just like, oh, well, we hired Tom Cruise because we want to put him on the poster. You know, and, right. and there's growth in the character. And yeah. you see that with that scene with him and Iceman is, I mean, I cry every time I watch yeah. that scene. And his reaction with Penny Benjamin near the end when he's realizing the price of it all 
and go all the way to where he sees Goose's son for the first time, yeah. mm-hmm. looking through that oh, bar window, yeah. and just the feelings that are all coming back, the missing of Goose, and then wondering if he's ready to walk back into it. And what you find out when you watch the whole movie is the things he did to keep Goose's son from mm-hmm. becoming, Rooster from becoming a pilot. So there's all of that in that face, and you have to go back and watch it again to really get all the levels Tom is working at. He's a good actor, and this film proves it yet again. He's not just a movie star. He's a damn good actor. It absolutely does. And the other thing, too, they could have easily felt fallen into cliches of making, well, that's clearly characters based on that person, and that's based right, on the right, same. Right. What they did with someone like Glenn Powell, right? Glenn Powell was a mixture of both Iceman and Maverick. Yeah, yeah. And, and the way that they played that together and all this stuff, and 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 the way that they set you up on this emotional roller coaster a couple different times, like, oh, that person's going to die now. That's oh. just, you know, that's going to happen mm-hmm. again. They need it because it's got to play the same beats and they don't do that. And it, yeah, it's a. I think that it was going to be on everybody's list. I'm glad you brought it up first because that's one that I think is uh, is everyone's going to be talking about. It. And the fact that it's getting the Oscar buzz, and it's getting and now whether or not it gets nominated or anything too, it's getting nominated for other awards. It's got an opportunity. Let me let me ask you, what do you mm-hmm. think? Does this thing get nominated for best picture? I think it's got a chance. Yeah, but I think it depends on. I it's the Academy is so unpredictable, mm-hmm. but more often than not. They are not going to recognize the big budget movie. What do you think, John? It's interesting because I think we're in this transition phase with the Academy because they brought in younger people, they brought in more diverse people, and also they're desperate for ratings. Right. So there's a lot of that. That's big. Yeah, there's a lot of that that factors in. So I would be very surprised if they didn't because remember, the expanding to 10 was because of 2008's Dark Knight, which was a popular film. Right. This is a popular film. And don't be surprised if both this film and Avatar The Way of Water are both on the Best Picture I, nominee list. I, I agree with you, and I think that they desperately need ratings because people aren't tuning in because no one sees the majority of, of the movies that are nominated minus right. our circle because we have to yeah. and we, we get access to these things. But they're, I don't know. My dad doesn't know what the hell certain movies are. Like, what the hell's this? What the hell's that? I don't know what that is. I ain't watching it. <laughs> um, all right, let's, let's shift to TV. We're going to shift to TV here, and let's get to uh, – we're going to go with Dan here. Dan, let's go to your first pick on TV. Let's bring up that list for sure. you. And it's it's TV, and we have a lot of great TV so far. What do you got? All right, well, I mean, I saw Oop. it there at the top of the list, and it's the top of my list. I don't watch a whole lot of streaming shows, okay? but I, I tend to focus on a lot of the bigger ones hmm. uh, and or. Yeah, I got to yeah. talk about Andor. Oof. I was jealous that you had Diego Luna in here just because I want to ask <laughs> 8 million questions about Andor. Ditto. <laughs> um, I, Star Wars streaming has been such a mi- mixed bag for me, even inside of a show. Oh, yeah. Like, even inside Obi-Wan Kenobi had some of my favorite Star Wars stuff of all time in it. And then some stuff that I'm just like, what are you doing? Yeah. yeah. Book of Boba Fett was half of two different, it was three different shows. Yeah. It was the prequel, it was the sequel, and then it was season three of Mandalorian. Right. Like, and never and never Godfather like they pitched. Right. Yeah. And, never, <laughs> and, he, and he never ran the crime syndicate. Right. Like the, the yeah. shows about him running the right. crime syndicate, right. and he did everything except that. So it's been very hit or miss. And so, and, and Andor, I was just like, I like Rogue One, but I'm like, that show like casting me. Okay, whatever. Right. It's the best Star Wars thing I've seen since a long time. I mean, mm-hmm. it's definitely up there with the, of the new batch for me, top two or three projects. But like, even inside of that, the fact that it basically was like, well, it's set in the Star Wars universe, but this is a show about espionage. This yeah. is a show about this person. It's exa- it's kind of like how Book of Boba Fett was never about him running the crime syndicate. Right. This show was about how does Cassian Andor go from the person at the beginning of this show to the person that we see in Rogue One. And then Stellan Skarsgård, Oh, man. That character, one of my favorite TV characters. Yeah. I mean, just the conflict inside of him. And the Empire, the way they show the Empire, it's not this, we've seen the big, mighty Star Destroyers, Death Star. Uh, and then I, we go inside the, the conference rooms and the bureaucracy and the politics. And the, I loved it. So I was shocked. I mean, and the, the finale blew me away. Mm, yeah. the, the, the whole fight the Empire. and the, I mean, I it, it was so Star Wars and also not Star Wars at the same time. Yeah. I love that show so much. Yeah. Outside gotcha. of being a Star Wars fan. Yeah. I love that show so much. I think you could watch it not being a Star Wars yeah. fan and really appreciate it. Because I think, I don't know what happened. I don't know how Tony Gilroy got this through. It's really a shock. Because it is so distinctly different from anything we've ever seen in Star Wars. Now, for those of you who might get upset, yes, there are shades of darkness. Shades of, surely, there's all of that. The rebellion, all of that, of course. But Andor operates on such a ground level, a gritty level, a rebel level that we have not seen before, and in such a way that 
is um, just phenomenal to see the levels that they've put into all of the characters here. And a lot of people were complaining that Andor was kind of, the character was kind of boring in the first few episodes. But it's like, because we had to establish this world, establish these characters, and they richly established all these characters. What's the thing I complain about on all, almost my, all my reviews is, don't hand me ensemble characters with no depth. I don't, yeah. it frustrates me. They did not do that here. They had 10 episodes. They were able to give you everything you wanted from Deidre Miro, from Cyril Karn, mm -hmm. from Luthen, uh, from uh, his mom. Everything was here, and they all got their moments to shine. Yeah. You talk about that speech from her at the end. That would put that on par with any speech in any Star Wars project ever. This is my favorite thing since Empire Strikes Back. Mm -hmm. And depending on the day, it, it can sometimes be above it. And I'll have to throw this in, seeing a Latino lead in a film like this really take the mantle. And he talked about it, that this is a migrant story, an immigrant story. In our history as Latinos, our countries, numerous revolutions, numerous rebellions, all those things happened. So seeing that happen on such a ground level and watch the journey that they had the guts to show the journey of a guy becoming a rebel who didn't want to even take part mm -hmm. and was happy just being a drifter who was like, uh, eking his way out in the universe, now having purpose, right? Luthen yeah. says to him, don't you want it to mean something? Don't you want to do something that'll leave a legacy? And taps into that thing that his mom saw when he was a child. So all of that came through, and it was so great to see. It's a brilliant show, and it's one of my, I agree with you. It's, I think it's, for me, um, it's it's the best written show. Mm -hmm. It's oh, the best written material it, since agree. Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, there's probably, either, there's yeah. no doubt. Yeah. Um, I and this isn't a, well, I, don't, I love Andor, and it's, but Mandalorian just scratches a couple of little more things yeah, in the course, Star Wars world sure. than me, but I think that as an overall written show, Andor is just so good, and the acting and everything. Oh. Uh, Adria Arjona, yeah, Adria Arjona uh, yeah. she is so Bix. fantastic, Vix. Yeah. And so I, I'm a massive fan of her and what she's able to do and little things and little things the way they set it up, where I've always pushed back against people who say it's boring. I, uh. I don't. I don't argue with anybody when they say it's slow because I don't think there's anything wrong with slow yeah, exactly. when it's a build. And the way that I've said this, and, and if you've been watching my show, you're sick of death of me saying this, but the way that I've said this, the way that I thought what Tony Gilroy did so brilliantly was the the way that he wrote this show in arc in arc episodes. So right. it would be like, mm -hmm. if you look at it as right. like a fight, like Every fighters, right? Episodes. It's like episode one, jab, wow. episode two, hook episode three uppercut you're out and then there's like there was one episode i think that stood on its own that was like the haymaker yeah right yeah. and I think the, it was seven the, yeah. right the great performance by andy circus and that whole oh. thing and you're talking about rebellion oh. because similar to you dan like when it came out i because it was announced in like 2018 or 2019 and when it came out i was like uh, okay look i don't necessarily think i mean we know what happens to cassie and andor i don't know how much detail there is behind it i said but the one thing that could be intriguing if they go this route because at that time i was reading all the novels right, right and i'm like okay what they've doing so well in novels is they're exploring the human side of the empire right. they're exploring more of the depth within the rebellion are they going to do that here if they do that this could be interesting and it turns out it's exactly what they did and they made it really interesting and as answer your question as far as how tony gilroy got it pushed yeah. through Remember, he saved Rogue One. Right. Because this right. is something I haven't talked about yet that I found very interesting. I talked to Diego Luna for about 25 minutes, and I asked him a couple things about Rogue One. He never mentioned Gareth Edwards by name once. He said the director. Right. right. Has he met him? <laughs> right, like I, I don't. I mean, I didn't ask him on it, but he, but he kept on Tony Gilroy. Tony Gilroy. Right. Tony Gilroy directed Rogue One. That's, I mean, that's why they brought of, him back. It's yeah. Kind of an open secret. Yeah. yeah. Is that? I mean, and this has been a, a recurring thing with Star Wars. Honestly, is they hired Gareth Edwards, who, by the way, I think is oh, has made. Yeah, I love Gareth movies. Edwards. I like that. But guy, they though. seem to have this issue sometimes with hiring directors that just don't quite deliver what they're looking right. for, right. and um, sometimes I think. Maybe they should have kept the director solo, uh, but obviously right. Tony Gilroy came in, and, and I mean I think that's kind yeah. of an open secret. Is like he came in and, and did a, a hefty amount, yeah. particularly yes. of acts. You know what he also did, John? He he did he added detail yeah. in that movie, and yep. he certainly adds detail in Rogue One. That's why Rogue One is my favorite of the new stuff. It and so too, yeah. I was much more excited than you two when they when they announced the Cassian because I was like, oh my god, this is great. First of all, it's a Latino lead, but also what are they going to show about his rebels journey? Right. What more of Star Wars are we going to get? I did not anticipate this. The, imagine what he could have done with Rogue One if he was there from the beginning, you know, with Gilroy. So the fact that we get a second season to go jumping all these time, uh, um, uh, doing all these time jumps, I think is going to be really fascinating to see how he holds it together. And we may see some guest stars that we didn't anticipate right. popping in in the second season. Because now, although it's not a ratings hit, 
it is certainly which it'll get there. I think it already is. Yeah, by the way, people keep, okay, saying, people keep saying people keep saying that, and I don't want to yeah. continue your point in a second, but people keep saying that about the ratings. Well, you know, it, it didn't do that well. Streaming doesn't work like movies. Right, right. Movies, when they come out, they have that opening weekend, and you can start to tell, Dan, as you know, with the box office, it's it's you're either you're going to be in this place. If you get a critical response off of something that you're already subscribed to, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you're like, okay, everybody keeps talking about this Andor show, and yeah. I had Disney Plus, all right, let me try it, and ratings keep going up for it. It's a yeah. very different circumstance. Yeah. But please, you were saying no, just saying that all of the, in spite of all of that, it's going to work, and I think it's a path forward for at least having this section of Star Wars exist. It does not mean, and I hated that there was this battle between the people who were into the other Star Wars, classic Star Wars, and the Andor Star Wars. All of it can exist like it does in every universe. Sure. So let it happen. Ant-Man is not the same as Iron Man, is not the same as Doctor Strange, to me is not the same as these other, Black Panther. They're all existing in separate universes and they dictate the parameters of their universe. In this universe, this is the way it has to be. All right, so, and that's, we've covered two so far. Yeah. So we're, <laughs> we're, so we're going to so speed up a bit. No, yeah. it's okay. Maybe the, those, there's some that we're going to spend a little more time on than yeah. others. But one that I, I I'm going to, I'm going to go to movies now and I'm going to bring my choice up here. And I just watched this. I just watched it, finished it last night. And it's definitely going to be in my list. And that is Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Uh, um, I had a chance. I've been hearing great things about it and I wanted to check it out. I finally got a chance to check it out. And what everyone was saying is fact. Oh, the people that I was listening to is fact. This is an emotional story, but then looking at what Del Toro does with the with the stop motion and the way that he is able to take in the detail. You talk about detail, the mm -hmm. detail that went into this. Fifteen years it took to make this movie, um, and everything that they did with it, from this, the the crafting and the idea between the puppetry and the idea of what Pinocchio is, and when you compare it to that fart box that came out um, oh, the, 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 with Tom Hanks. Um, yes. Now, what I will say is this, what Tom, the Tom Hanks movie did that was interesting and then it stopped being interesting at all was in the very beginning where they explore the loss of Geppetto mm. and what had happened. I go, whoa, well, this is good. Are they going to explore in this? And then it just drops and they turn into this complete not. They do this. Del Toro does this. And it's the whole theme of the movie. It's it's understanding oneself. It's believing in oneself. It's understanding of who the person is. Believing, like you know, sticking to what you are and who you are, and understanding how the world works. And it's not always going to be as Rocky says, sunshine and rainbows, and all these things. And and it was a, a relationship between father and son. Um, there was just so much to it, and the music is brilliant. And Ewan McGregor. It's his best performance uh, of the year, honestly. Um, I thought there's lots of things that he did, but I, for me, it was this emotional. It was the Sebastian Cricket, not Jiminy Cricket. There was these. There were just these things that really worked, and and I know this might be blasphemous. I think it's the best version of Pinocchio I've ever seen. I love the 1940s version. I love it. I watched it recently, but this movie is so. It he says it in his in one of the things he's talking about. He goes, "This is the story you know that you don't really know." Right. I loved it, but uh, but Dan, what what did you think? Did you see the movie? Did you like it? I did. It's 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 um, amongst my favorite movies of the year too. Although I the the, four, the 1940 Pinocchio is like literally it's in great my top it's great. however many movies of yeah. all time top ten maybe. But it's this is so good and it's I mean how many Pinocchio movies have there been a hundred yeah. maybe and the Benigni's fact that done two alone yeah, yeah the, the fact that Guillermo del Toro was like wanted to make this movie it's it, the the thing that shows and I always say in my reviews you can tell when it shows and it didn't show. And Disney's Pinocchio is passion. Right. Robert Zemeckis watching that crap box. Yeah. Or fart box, as you called it. No no passion. Nothing. No no director stamp. It, it just everybody in that movie felt like they were just doing a job. Oh, yeah. And it's and it, you could tell. Nobody yep. wanted to make the movie. Disney was like, eh, what's on the list? All right, whatever. Right. Let's do Pinocchio. This was the passion behind this movie and taking it and putting it against the, the you know, the leading into World War II and mm. tying in the fascist stuff. Yep. Um, but it didn't seem weird or out of place. Yeah. It was the spirit of the story. It was the, the broad strokes of the story, but yeah. it was Guillermo del Toro had a vision for how he wanted to tell this story. And you could tell it wasn't just corporate obligation, which yeah. is what yeah. the other one felt like. And it's, I mean, stop motion. God bless the people that do stop motion because there isn't any money in it. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, it's all passion. Yeah. And um, just a gorgeous movie. Beautiful film. That's the number one thing you'd say about Guillermo, right? Passion. Yeah. I mean, like it's he's has that for the things he believes in. He is he is one of the warmest, most affable pieces of sunshine <laughs> in human form that you're ever going to be around. 
And the fact that he creates these horror films that can be quite effective and um, uh, stay with you for years afterwards speaks volumes of the way he's been able to com compartmentalize and approach his work with such love and passion. And certainly here in Pinocchio, it comes through. I agree with you to an extent. I think it's on par with 1940s yeah, Pinocchio. Yeah, yeah, Which was the first film I ever saw in theaters with my mom. So it has a special place. But the fact that this could even come close, I think, exactly. speaks volumes of yeah. how great it was. I almost didn't go to the screening because I was like, oh, another Pinocchio movie. Do I really need to go to this? It's 30 minutes to drive to the screening. But when I got there, it was like five people in the theater. 20 minutes into the film, I was just blown away by what I was seeing design-wise, artistically, the story, the emotion, and they weren't ashamed to show a Geppetto who was mean, who was rough, who was alcoholic, who was dismissive, who was dealing with the trauma of loss in his way, even though other people were trying to tell him a better way to be. And it's- I'd say brash. Or, 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 sure, or, or if the, you want to say that. Mean? mean? You think he was I mean, he threw the he boy was rough. out. He had some rough edges. Yeah, he, he was brash. Rough edges. Come on. But yeah, but, 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 but I, I, I hear what you're saying. I agree with you. I agree with you. I thought was yes. great. Yes. And, then you, and then you throw in, I thought the music, I, thought, oh, I liked the songs. Beautiful. Yeah. The songs were great. I heard some people dinging the songs. I'm like, you're all insane. The, the music was fantastic. And the vocal work, the emotional performances from every actor, from Kit to Christoph Waltz. Oh, he's so good at Ewan that. McGregor, yeah. All of it, to Finn Wolfhart, all of it worked so well. And yes, what you mentioned, Dan, the the politics but the italian approach mm -hmm. this is an italian approach yep. made for a universal audience so it so worked top to bottom and i cried three or four times it's a I great mean, movie that's seen by the cemetery oh, by the god. headstone oh god good and, night and tom kenny as mussolini works oh, pretty good for me so good all right we're gonna um so as we move on to the next one, we're gonna we're gonna go into some tv here now again we're gonna we're gonna drop into tv and we're gonna go back to roca so john you got <laughs> you got tv you got a list you got a bunch of well, stuff let's lighten things up peacemaker let's talk okay, about peacemaker yes, yes, for yes, the yes, love yes, of god yes yes please talk about a, a a large cock in a speedo, American speedo. I mean, wow. I was so blown away. <laughs> it's the original title of the show. <laughs> <laughs> yes, by by Peacemaker. I mean, you know, I know we all get caught up in the idea of fighting woke or not woke. Well, here comes a show that's like, this is what it is. Deal with it, accept it, and look at the humanity behind it. And I thought that was so gutsy and incredible to see. And having John Cena, who I did not know could carry a show acting-wise, come in and absolutely knock it out of the park. We talk about Diego Luna. He had certainly credits and we'd seen him do things, but leading something like this was a huge task to take on. You look at Cena with way less credits, way less yeah. experience, no offense to WWE, and you go, well, what can he do? Can he really make me care about this character? Oh, I didn't even like the character in the Suicide Squad. He was a bad guy, but they made you care about him. And the jokes were right on the edge. They were great. The journey he was going on, that scene in the second or third episode when he is on the bed yelling at himself and crying. And who hasn't been there who's a sensitive person, who's an emotional person, who's had a terrible childhood and and, and has those feelings of low self-worth? That's all going through. The mental health aspect of it all, I thought was genius in the way they did this. And then throwing in Jennifer Holland, and I thought she was fantastic as well. And I can't remember the actress who plays the uh, Amanda Waller's daughter. Oh, yeah. She was great throughout yeah, the whole was. show. The chemistry from everybody involved and the Robert Patrick stuff worked mm -hmm. really, really well because there are a portion of people who've had a shitty dad. And so it's like, can you connect to that and what he's trying to do? And that finale was awesome. phenomenal. It was good. Having Aquaman and Flash show up right at the end, genius. Dan? Yeah. yeah, ironic that James Gunn would put Aquaman and Flash at the end of the show. <laughs> yeah. um, true. Who true. knew? Who yeah. knew? Uh, yeah, no, that is, this is a word of mouth thing. Because I'm kind of like John. Oh, really? I, I, I like the Suicide Squad yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot, but they're like, oh, we're going to do a Peacemaker show. I was like, eh, okay, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and then it came out, and I didn't watch it, and then I kept hearing week after week, I'm like, Peacemaker's great, Peacemaker's great. I'm like, okay, whatever. So I caught up, and by the end, I was you know watching it uh, when it when it, right. as it was coming out because it was weekly, right? Yes, it was. Um, and uh, it's great. Yeah, it was hilarious. I mean, again, it's it's kind of like Andor in the sense of like here's a character I didn't really care that much about, or I didn't feel like I didn't care about seeing their own show, and then you make an actually great show. Yeah. Shout out to Steve Agee, also great yes. in this show. Oh my god, an incredibly nice uh, person. Um, and I I don't. It's it's a real quandary because looking at all the stuff that's going on with DC is how. I don't see how we get more. Right. Because I don't mm. see how James Gunn can throw everybody else out and be like, except Peacemaker. We're right. going to do more of that because yeah. that's just politically and, and right. everything else. I don't know you don't how want you that can stress. do it. Exactly. <laughs> it's yeah. Just, yeah. I don't know how you can do it, but that sucks because yeah. 
and 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 I think by necessity throwing out some things, you also have to throw out the stuff that's working, which is this yeah. show. So I don't. I don't know how you get more because how do you how do you politically how do you even do that? Well, what about well, you know? I, agree. I think politics, the fans wouldn't you, care, but it, oh, just, some I don't know. Would. Some of them would. Some that's the problem. Would. That's, right. The problem is the plan fair that you have. Enough, but, I will, but I will fair. say that the, the but the show itself was. I'm a little in a different place than you guys were oh. because I love. I, oh, no, I love the show. I love the Suicide Squad, right? Yeah. And it was the Suicide Squad that made me watch the show because oh, okay. because when Cena because I. I've always thought Cena was fine. Yeah. Um, and I thought he was funny in roles like Trainwrecked and, yeah. and other things. But I thought he was sure. the worst part of Bumblebee. Um, and there was, and I'm like, I don't know. He's just They keep trying to push Cena as an actor. I'm like, it should I don't know. And the Suicide, Suicide Squad comes out. And there's a scene with him and Idris Elba that is one of the funniest scenes that I've ever seen a movie in a long time and it's when they're going through the camp yeah yeah, yeah it's and hilarious, it's <laughs> hilarious. Yeah. and i was i watched it in here and it, and i was just belting out laughing right yeah. so when they said they're doing this mo this show i'm like okay sign me up i want to see and the trailers were coming out i'm like this is uh, look you got me with suicide squad can they deliver and they delivered and then some because i was yeah. concerned of like the the idea of like why well, don't they made me not like him at the yeah end. i'm like I appreciated his performance, right, right, right. but it made me not like him. And the way that they did that and they spun that, but I also, Freddie Stroma to me was a stand. Oh my God. Freddie yeah. Stroma um, was just so good in that role. But I love the show. I'm with you guys that it sucks. We're probably not going to get a season two. And I'm kind of with you, Dan, as much as I want to see it. I don't think it's the best move politically for them to do at the moment. Um, and then you also have another show that's similar to it, which is The Boys. And which we can talk oh. about, which we can talk about in a little bit, so but it's good. but Dan's on the clock now, oh, and now clock. we're gonna get to now we're gonna get to um <laughs> some we're gonna get to some movies here because we got a couple more movies. Dan, you got a bunch of them up here. What do you got? I do. We talked about a bunch of blockbusters. Let's talk yeah. about one that nobody saw. Uh, Tar. <laughs> okay. I really love Tar. I love this movie, really? it's, and I didn't okay. think I didn't think I would like this. Not that I didn't think I like it, but it's like. I did. I was really put off by the promotion and the marketing, and it was just like, oh boy, this movie looks like it's all the way up its own butthole. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, here we go. And so I didn't, I didn't see it when it first came out, and then I tried to see as much as I can toward the end of the year. And Kate Blanchett was getting a lot of buzz, and I'm like, all right, well, I feel like to to be an informed awards voter, I know, shocking, right? Uh, I feel like I need to watch this movie for at least Kate Blanchett, and it ended up being like one of my favorite movies this year. Hmm. Wow. I just found it so, for me, the mark of a good movie or one that like I can list as my favorite one, I can't stop thinking about. It's like I'm thinking about this movie in a good way. And it was just so, it would be easy to go in this movie in one way where it's like, she's a terrible person, which she is, by the way. <clears throat> but the movie itself portrays things as, to me, it was a lot more realistic in the sense of, she's a terrible person, but at the same time, there is nuance in what's happening here. Sure. There's nuance in the world. She's doing objectively bad things, and she's being held accountable for some of them, but in the process of that, she, you know, people kind of run with it in another way, and so, well, that, okay, well, that's interesting as well. And so it's sort of this idea of accountability, but everything that also comes with accountability, and but, but also sort of this rise and fall thing and the characterization of her. The movie kind of inducts you into this cult of Lydia Tarr as it begins, okay. and, and it basically is telling you that she is this genius, that she is this, you know, oh, art at all costs, whatever, and then it's slowly dismantled. Like piece by piece yeah. over the course of that movie, it slowly dismantles. Is that a Black Swan kind of vibe to it? I mean, it, not quite as like the psychological yeah. horror type thing, yeah. uh, but but a, a, a little bit more of like you know a, a look at the artist. But yeah. then it almost almost kind of like whereas Black Swan is sort of like all about the art mm -hmm. and it's like how the art is the transformative thing. Tar is a lot more about how the art is. What's your language policy here? Well, you just said it doesn't matter. This is big. This is this is big. This is big. Yeah, this is uh, this is big thing. Exactly. So go ahead. Uh, this movie is much more about uh, the art is bullshit. Yeah. yeah, and it's more about the person underneath, the damaged, flawed person underneath who hides behind the art. Sure. And it was just so complex. And like I said, I've, I've talked about the scene, and I'm sure it's gotten. It's one that people talk about. Is like there's a scene where she's teaching a class, and you have a student who says that they don't like Bach. Because Bach is a you know straight white male and yeah. misogynistic, and so I can't relate to the music. And there's this discussion between them, where it's it's a scene where neither neither person is entirely right, yeah, and neither person is entirely wrong. There are some ways in which the student is completely right, right, and there are other ways in which Lydia Tarr is completely right. And and it's such a good scene. 
after the movie, I was reading about it, and they're like, we know that scene was done in one take. It's a 10-minute long take. Wow. And I didn't even notice it That's when great. I was watching the movie wow. because I was following the movie so along the conversation. so much. Yeah. That's great. So I, right. I found it a very complex and interesting movie. Well, I haven't seen this one yet, so I can't really speak on it. I know that, I, like you, I want to watch it because of the awards and all this yeah. stuff. And John, do you get a chance to see this I one? I haven't seen this yet, okay. but the way you're talking about it and the reviews I've read about it, I'm even more interested to see it now because, yes, it's time to have a little more nuanced conversation about stuff like that we are talking about in these movies, and we're starting to see a pushback within our own community about this idea of just accepting one way of seeing these things. There's more nuance to be had. There's more ways to have this conversation, and more elements need to be thrown, and even I'm having to take a look at some of these things in a different way now because of what I'm hearing in arguments. And so I like that the movie confronts that and deals with that, with someone like Kate Blanchett, who is such an incredible actress, yeah. but yeah, by the uh, aside from story stuff, mm. she she I just mean, nails just, it. Yeah, just Kate Blanchett. Yeah. She's a, she almost it's not fair. It's, yeah. it's like she should just get like every five years, just give her an Oscar. Right, and her and Streep. You don't have to her worry Streep. about it. Yeah. So like That's she's true. just taken care of for five years, about, and everybody else I felt that way about Hopkins for years. Yeah. 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 just give it to him every three years. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> as we go, that's then we're sticking. We stayed with uh, with movies here. I'm going to stay in movies. And speaking of never doubting and never, um, you know, giving someone an award because their body work yeah. I think you gotta just consider Cameron one of the goats of all uh, absolutely <laughs> when you go to Avatar The Way of Water I have now seen this movie twice I saw it again with my my 11 year old because of a lot of different reasons one she's a massive fan of the first one and I also wanted to go and I wanted to see because when you can get caught up in that movie because it's such a visual spectacle that when you see it for the first time you're like whoa look at the bright lights and candy I love this movie and I'm like I don't I don't want to do that again I want to make sure not again because I still because I've gone back and watched the first avatar many times over and really enjoy it so yeah. I'm more of a fan of it the first one than say like John mm. of the movie but like <laughs> but I I'm a lot of people a lot of people yeah. like, it doesn't transfer over the first movie doesn't transfer over for some people on um like streaming or on uh, tv yeah. the way it does in the theater and i don't necessarily think that this movie will transfer over the same way yeah. because it's just such an event in the theater however did it hold up for me as emotional as it did the first time it did and then some i teared up in the same spots i did the first time it you talk about what we were talking about before with family mm -hmm. and relationships it does that I think it has more of an original um, take than the first movie did. I can acknowledge that there's a lot of things. I mean, I think a lot of movies where the people always say Fern Gully and Dance of the Wolves and all this stuff too. But like you could, you could say the same thing about Star Wars, Flash Gordon, uh, you know, Dune, all this, yeah. whatever. But um, but this movie had just, and I was worried about the fact that they were going to focus on the kids and take mm. away from the main character. They did focus on the kids, but it didn't take away from anything except just it added to more of the um, mythology. And I was also wondering, well, Cameron loves the water man so of course we're going to the water um but it worked and even watching like the the magic of the movie through my daughter's eyes as she's sitting there and during the fish and she's like reaching out at the screen trying to touch stuff and i'm like yeah but now i'm watching it and going like i know what happens here but man i'm going on this journey and zoe saldana i don't know if she's gonna be nominated i, I she probably won't but she should yeah. she's got such a moment a couple different moments, but there's particular moments that just stand out, and I think she does so well. And when you go back and look at the way that these movies are made, and how they they got all this shit on their heads, and they're all and it's not easy to do. And it shows the kind of you look at and George Lucas is is fantastic. He's a great storyteller, not the best traditionally with actors. We know that. There's something about Cameron that what he's able to do, even they have you you've got like a full computer on your head, and he's still able to pull this kind of stuff out of you. Um, this movie is a masterpiece. It really is. It's it's just it, it's a technical masterpiece, and it just is. There's so much to it. It's I don't know yet where it lands on my list, but it's pretty damn high. Mm. But uh, but John, now I know that you were you were someone who wasn't a fan of the first movie, and yeah. we spoke. You, yeah. you I texted you after I saw it. Yeah. And when I was very curious of your thoughts, and and we've talked since, but I want to yeah. get your thoughts on it. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, and I rewatched the first one on Disney Plus just to kind of get yeah. me back into the world because I'm not one of these people that went back to it multiple times. I felt the story was a bit cliche and and stolen, and you know, so I was like, I wasn't into it. The visual effects were incredible, though. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, at least you know he waited all this time. He said he wanted to wait till the special effects caught up to his vision for what he wanted the movie to be, and. Damn it if he didn't knock it out of the park. I love, love this movie. I've seen it three times now. Have you really? In 3D, oh, wow, okay. I went saw it in 4X, 40X. Yeah. And then I went and saw the one with Screen X. And the Screen X down in San Diego where I live, beautiful to see the movie. Projected across three walls. Oh, that's cool. It's incredible. That's the breadth cool. 
of what he was doing in his vision. And look, Cameron is a DGAF person. He does not no. care. He's got a vision. He is going to kick you out of his office. He's going to do what he wants to do because guess what? The movie made a billion dollars already. Already. Already a billion yeah. dollars as we're recording this. He knows that he understands the audience better than maybe any director or modern director consistently has ever done. Almost all of his films have been hits, and here's another one. And the special effects are great. The revolutionary, the underwater stuff is beautiful. The introducing of the reef people was mm -hmm. great. All of it. Bringing back Horwich was great. Yeah. Stephen Lang, another person we should talk about who's yeah. a key to this movie. Zoe Zeldin, I agree with you. But also the story. And this is the thing that was missing from me in the first one. I care about the characters in this one. I cared about the connections. I cared about their journeys. I cared about what was happening. And so for me, this works well, as well as it does because the story works. You can wow me with special effects as the Transformers movies do. But for to go to the next level, that's what Avatar yeah. The Way of Water does. And I was so surprised at how much I've loved this film. Yeah, you know, Dan, what I thought was very interesting about this movie also is you hear some, like, like John, who thought the first, I don't know where you stand on the first movie, but I'm sure you'll, you'll talk about it in a second. But I think what it did was people who didn't love the first movie as much, a lot of people I heard beforehand going, okay, the second one, I'll see it, but who cares if they're going to do three and four? Mm -hmm. Those people that yeah, I've spoken to, true. they all want to go back to Pandora <laughs> yeah. in three. Like a bunch of people who didn't like it, like, I got to see where this story goes. Now I want to go back there. First of all, where'd you stand on, on the first movie and then where'd you land with the second one? I, I remember those people that went and saw the first movie and I was like, wow, that was incredible. Yeah. But I never really gave it a whole lot of thought afterwards. Mm -hmm. I don't. I didn't own it until I think this year I was doing a movie club for it and I was like, well, all right, I'll get it. Uh, it's. I think the first one is... It's, it's fine. Um, you know, the, the technical stuff is incredible and is mm -hmm. outstanding. I thought this one was, I, I think that the focus was more on character, yeah. which I think was probably a smart choice. Um, technically, it was brilliant. It's James Cameron. Yeah. You know, it's fine. Uh, not, it's more than fine. It's, it's, he, he pushes himself so hard. Mm. And I think he sometimes pushes everybody else a little too hard too. <laughs> but he pushes himself hard first and foremost. Um, you know, story wise, I thought that it was, Okay, you know, I, it didn't really connect to me that emotionally on a story level. I, I thought that it was fell into a lot of the tropes that you've seen in a lot of other movies, but I cannot deny the technical brilliance of it. Um, you know, so it wasn't one of my favorite necessarily movies of the year, but I did not like it either, and mm -hmm. I saw it twice as well. And, right. and the second time, I was even more just, I mean, it's just the, the construction of that world, the imagination and the talent and the skill yeah. that it takes to, to, do, to think of that and assemble the team that can execute that is mind blowing. And I, you know, as a box office guy, I thought it was hilarious. It's, it's one of the things that annoys the piss out of me yeah. is, you know, people saying it bombed. People get people well, no, <laughs> because you'll get five times the audience. Yeah. If you make a video that says Avatar is a bomb, you get five times the audience right. oh, and course. you're never held accountable for it. Right. No. And I was the guy out there saying like, are you stupid? Right. Do you not pay attention? <laughs> Do you not understand that this happens every time every James time. Cameron makes yeah. one of every these movies time. and it comes out this time of year? Is, yeah. It comes out and people say it didn't make enough money. Right. And then over the next two weeks, it explodes. And it's exactly what's been yes. going on, especially worldwide with this movie. A couple of different things with that. The first is that it, it was projected at first. It was projected at 500 million. Yeah. So when it made 430, up, yep, it bombed. Yeah. 430 is a great projection. That's <laughs> first, at part, yeah. at part one. Part two, the first Avatar did not make 100 million open weekend. 77 million. Right. 77. Yeah. There was not a movie until The Force Awakens that opened up at 100 million in December. There was no, there was no movie before that that had ever done that. So the fact that it did it now, and now, as you said, it made a billion dollars already in, what, 10 days? Yeah. It's exactly. going to continue, and 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 the other th miss a lot of people. I was talking to somebody last night, like, ah, oh, yeah, but it still needs to make two billion to break even. No, it needs. To, what Cameron was talking about was domestic. He was talking about domestic inside of that. So it's already it's it's already broken even as far as because they also shot a lot of three. Well, that's the other thing is yeah. people quote the budget and they're like, well, I mean, there's so much. Again, it's like it's so easy to make these like hard proclamations yeah. about this stuff, and it's like the budget was two and. And three, some de yeah. indeterminate amount of three, right. and part of four. Part of by four, the way. right? So right. it's like it, it's. It, I mean, it's crazy that we are at a point like yes, the movie did honestly need to make a billion for budget wise, yeah. but at this point, like to continue with this narrative of just like it's I don't know. Yeah, we still got to wait. And people see. love failure, but it's like yeah. it's like be nice for God's sake. Yeah, I but, throw three yeah. quick things. In yeah, there. one, it's nothing else is going to challenge it to Ant Man and Wasp: Quantumania, which is right. near the end of that's right, right. It uh, runs un unopposed. It's, it's it unopposed. just pushed right over Puss in Boots. Poor Puss. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. which yeah. is a good, which is a good really movie. good it's movie. A good movie. It's so yeah. good. Maybe the best uh, dreaming ever done. Yeah. Uh, the other part of this is this was such a high wire act. 
Wakanda Forever fall, fell, fell apart in moments because they tried to shove too much in. Here's Cameron establishing what you're going to see. That these kids are going to be predominant in three, four, and five, while also respecting the story from one and these characters from one yeah. and fleshing out their relationships more, take you on the journey farther. So the fact that he was able to do that high wire act with both of these things, I think is incredible. And you're right. The box office situation here, and both of you are absolutely right here. You, it, negativity sells more, but it is going to surprise so many people. I said this on the hot mic that it was going to make $3 billion. And uh, if it, I think if it had been before COVID, there was a real possibility sure. it could make $3 billion. Now, here's what Jeff said on the hot mic, Jeff Snyder. He, he hears that Cameron has already turned in a cut of Avatar 3. Awesome. It is nine hours, and he wants them to do full VFX on it before he cuts it down. Well, that's a dumb idea. <laughs> it's what he wants Sorry, to do. That's, I'm just that's saying. how you bankrupt. That's how you, that's how you well, bankrupt a movie. Unless that you're gonna, a unless, unless you're gonna turn it, unless you're gonna turn it into three and four. Right. Yeah, that's no. what I want. Right. Maybe that's, but, that's, that's, but that's a whole yeah, different that's podcast. Level that's stuff. Right yeah, but it's a whole different podcast. Like so we, we do say yeah. don't doubt James Cameron. Yeah, exactly. But I, that is insane. That's insane. But look, I know we we could probably spend four hours just just along on Avatar. But we're gonna move. We're gonna move over. And with John, we're gonna we're gonna stick with movies, man. We're gonna go. We're gonna stay in the movie realm, and we're gonna get something else you want to talk about here what do you yeah, got yeah i mean i i want to talk about elvis come on yeah elvis come on people yeah. who saw this coming look i'm gonna toot my own horn 55 million 55 000 views on my trailer reaction elvis i had no idea that was gonna do anywhere as well as it did on my channel i didn't think anybody cared anymore no. so i was shocked when they announced that they were doing and i was like boz lerman not really known for making a lot of money certainly people like his movies but box office i don't know who is austin butler boom he comes out and that's from that first trailer on, I was like, oh, this could be something really good. Then we got to see some of it at CinemaCon, and I was like, oh, my God, this could be great. Because I love Elvis to pieces, worship Elvis. And then this comes out and is absolutely incredible with one of the best performances of the year. I think he's going to be overlooked in the end and not get a nomination, mm. but he is so, so You don't think he's going to get a nomination? I don't know. Oh, that I would be don't a know. criminal. I think he'll I get agree. nominated. I don't think he wins, though. I don't know. Does, yeah, does probably not win. Does yeah. not win. Yeah. Does yeah. Not win. But yeah. his performance here is fantastic. And Bos Lerman's style in telling this story, I think too many people wanted a straightforward biopic. This is an artist. He is a director. He's yeah. an auteur. And what he was able to do, taking you from place to place in Elvis's life, but having the moments where he has, where he's changing, where he's progressing, and he's maturing, but he's realizing harder and harder how the prison that he's in with Colonel Tom Parker is restricting him more and more. And then by the end, accepting his fate in this, terrible scene of resignation in Vegas that I think is oh, yeah. devastating. Oh, yeah. Absolutely devastating. So, And I didn't mind Tom Hanks. I know some people going back and I forth. I like Tom Hanks yeah, in that movie, man. Let no? it stretch. Let it stretch. <laughs> but you, yeah. I liked it overall, yeah. chemistry-wise, direction-wise. The music came back to life for me in a way that I have not seen. And I hadn't seen a great Elvis film since Kurt Russell doing him in 1970 for John Carpenter. So to see, And that was TV. And that was TV. So to see him come back and do a theatrical film like this uh, and Boz Lerman bring Elvis back to life and see the box office for it. Things endure. There's a reason icons endure because the music or the work is timeless. Elvis is timeless, and he caught it like lightning in a bottle in this movie. Yeah, Austin Butler was that movie. Yeah, yeah. If it had been a guy that was just doing an Elvis impression, that movie would have been an absolute disaster. Yep. And I think that Boz Lerman did push things too far. Uh, in a few places, I like his style. <laughs> Moulin Rouge is one of my favorite movies, but there yeah. were sometimes where it's just like, calm down. Just tell the story. And, <laughs> and Tom Hanks the for The hubris me, on you, Dan Merle. <laughs> Tom Hanks for me was just, I get what they were going for. Too cartoony for too you? Too cartoony. Yeah. Okay. Austin Butler grounded yeah, totally, that 100%. movie. He kept it in the realm of believability and actual honest emotion. And uh, I... I put that movie on my, when I predicted the summer top 10, I put Elvis on my list. Mm -hmm. And I thought I even thought I was a little bit crazy. Uh, and a lot of people certainly did too. Like Elvis, that movie's not going to do anything. And I was kind of like you. I didn't see the, you know, cinema con and stuff, yeah. but I'd seen the trailers and stuff. And I just had a feeling yeah. just from that look at the performance. I'm like, I think this guy is going to nail it. And he did. And I think that he is for me, 
the number one reason mm. that movie did well was because he gave that movie a believability and a humanity that would not have been He was there. the hot ticket. Yeah, it's what it was. Parody otherwise. Yeah, yeah, he was the hot ticket. He was the one that, because as John said, you're looking, oh, who, oh, who's this? And I had just mentioned this on a, in a show we may or may not get to. There's a there's a certain character in a show that I turn to my wife and I go, who the hell is this? This is, this is I'm watching this show because of this person now. Um, and Austin Butler, I agree with you, what you're saying, Dan, is that he, he really sold, like, the essence of Elvis, yeah. right? And that idea of it. And I and, and also agree with you, John, where that there's just this devastating scene as someone who's as a performer, you know, doing stand up comedy and oh. and being I remember being in a hotel room when I was not I was not uh, I was not married and have a girlfriend at the time and nothing and I was just going on, on the road or and I remember having a great set one night. Really great set. And then I went home and looked up at the hotel and I forget where the hell I was. I forget I, I might have been in Alabama. I don't remember where I was. And I looked up and I went, Huh. And it was that kind of one, yeah. and that wasn't yeah. Yeah. every night in Vegas doing this. And it was like, and he brought that, but it was the dance. It was the, it was, and you said the music. I was listening to Elvis like throughout the next couple of months. Yeah. I went on a road trip to uh, to Solvang with my with my family. And we were listening to it on the road, and my kids were dancing to it. And, those, and yes, you're right. It's the it's it shows you if it's there. It's there, yeah. and it might. And you like you're saying, but maybe don't people care? People will always care if it's there. It's there. Yeah. So. But yeah, that movie was great. I do think he'll get nominated. I, I want to push back real quick. Yeah. What Boz Lerman captured was the spirit of Elvis in the movie. Butler is a great performer for playing Elvis, of course. But Boz Lerman understood every human being has a rebellion inside of themselves. Sure. Every human being is a little rebel. And he captured that rebellion in how he portrayed Elvis. And all of us who become rebels get older and we realize we can't rebel as much as we did. And that's what he captures in the end. So he spoke to the humanity of that with the story construction and direction. You may, not, you may have thought he'd gone too far. But for me, I thought he captured the soul of Elvis along with Austin Butler yeah. capturing the performance of who the man was. Well, I'm realizing this. And you guys are probably know if you saw when I uploaded. This is a two-hour show. Today. <laughs> um, so uh, we Whoopsie. but And that's fine. No, I'm, I'm in really enjoying the conversation. Yeah. I feel like everybody else will be too. And so I, and, and I want to make sure that we don't miss anything. So I think two hours yes. will be will be enough um, for, for this one. Now, I will, I'm will. i going to go into TV. Okay. Um, and I'm going to go with House of the Dragon. Not Car that's the, yeah. yeah, House of the Dragon. House of the Dragon, um, Game of Thrones, the prequel series. And so I was one of the few people that did not mind the last season of, of Game of Thrones. I didn't, I, I, I wasn't making videos about how much I hated it. I wasn't doing a stance about it. I wasn't, I, I was not a, I was not a Game of Thrones book person. I was just watching and I totally agree that the first few seasons of Game of Thrones was far superior than the last because the last one was just basically, hey, this is a popular show and what do we want everybody to see? And I, and I, and I got that. It was rushed and, and I understood that, but I enjoyed it for what it was. Um, but I understood criticisms for it. So when House of the Dragon came out and it was based off of Fire and Ice and it was this basically making this show off of a history book, I thought it was an idea. But what sold me on it was the idea that they were going to take George R. R. Martin, he was going to be heavily involved and they were going to really go off of that time period. And the way that they did it, and the characters you're talking about, you're talking about before mm -hmm. with development. Yeah. This show is so rich in character, and I think one of the benefits it has over the original Game of Thrones is the fact that it stood into. We really learned about one pocket of characters. Where Game of Thrones could jump back and forth in so many different realms, which was cool, but this was really all about that that house and the idea. Yeah. And 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 I thought Matt and Matt Smith was a standout, no mm -hmm. doubt about it. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you, Emma Darcy. Yeah. I knew nothing about Emma Darcy. I just knew that they were um, going to be cast as the older Renera. And man, I remember saying, "Well, I really like the younger Renera." Yeah, Millie yeah. Alcock. Uh, I don't know. Millie Alcock was amazing. I don't. I don't know, man. And then right away, Emma Darcy's like, "Shut up, stupid! Watch this!" <laughs> Within seconds of appearing, you're just like, "Okay, this." And it was everything about that. You talk about season finales. Yeah. That season finale, I do reactions on this channel. And normally, and a lot of people will say, well, one of the reasons they like my reactions is because I'm not doing the big, oh, oh, I'm just, I'm, to me, I'm just reacting. Like, okay, look at that. Hey, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I was out of my seat. I'm jumping. I'm like, no, I'm hitting on my, my legs. I was, and it was all genuine mm -hmm. because I was like, what is happening in the show? And it was because I was invested. That show is pure investment. And I cannot wait for the second season. There's so many things that happened in that season that set it up brilliantly. This civil war that, that's going on in general. It's a brilliant show, but Dan, you 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 watched the you watched yeah. the show. You dug it. 
I did. Yeah, I, I was one of those people that's kind of on the fence about it. Yeah. I I did I didn't like when the Game of Thrones ended. I was okay with the ending. It mm. hadn't sat quite as well with me over time, but I still am not like virulently. But I just didn't really have a th- desire for more. I wasn't sure. like I need more Game of Thrones right now. Um, and I really liked the show. I think. You know, hindsight's twenty twenty, and I think that there may have been some pressure either within the creative team or with HBO Max to get through the younger version quicker. And you know, the Patty Cunt, the early Patty Cunt and, mm. and the stuff with Millie Alcock, because we only got him, I think, for th- four episodes. I think if people, if they had known how much people were to get connect to those actors, that they maybe could have spent some more time. And, and lessened the time with the adult versions. But that's all hindsight stuff. And I also understand, like, the need, like, well, we feel like we need to get to the main thrust of the story mm-hmm. quicker because my only major criticism of the show would be I think they did speed through and take some bigger jumps. Uh, there were sometimes they're like, oh, no, I wanted to spend more time with that or I wanted to get to know this character better. But I think now, going into season two, you have a great foundation and a great cast. And I think now, maybe with the performance of the show, they have a little bit more permission to be like, people aren't just going to be anxious to get to the dragons as quickly. We can spend a little bit more time on this, these character moments because what time they had was spent really well. And uh, I was, I was, if you would have told me house, the dragon rings of power, one of these shows you're going to love and it's going to surprise the hell out of you. And one of these shows you're going to be like, eh. <laughs> I honestly would have put it the other way around. Right. And you wind up loving shield. <laughs> yeah. Same. Favorite, uh, <laughs> favorite show of the year. Same. Uh, go ahead, John. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what can I? I don't know if there's much more to add to what you guys said. It was an incredible show. They took a chance. Yeah. They didn't know after the. And I had a, as you will, see, if you can find it on YouTube, I had a much more stronger reaction to the finale than you two did, because I had defended that uh, season all the way to that episode, that final episode. I think betrayed everything that they had established in Game of Thrones, and I was so mad about it. Um, so I was nervous about this. I I love Game of Thrones. I was nervous, but when I after that first episode, I'm like. Oh my God, they understand this. Once again, they could bring us back to the first few seasons, as you mentioned, the best of Game of Thrones. And they took their time and established these characters. And I think they jumped as much as they did, Dan, because I don't think they knew they were going to get a second season. So they're like, let's just throw everything in here. keep Try to make it work as much as possible. And then we'll see what we have at the end. So they were shooting their shot. And I think now that we are going to get more seasons, I think you're 100% right, Dan. We're going to get to dive in much more. And don't be surprised if we don't have flashback episodes with these characters That's what I think they're going to do, too. I know Patty Considine's like, I'm not doing it. I'm not going back. I think they write him a great episode. Mm -hmm. I could see him coming. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Um, All right. So we're going to shift on over now. John, um, I'm going to give you – where do you want to go? You want to go movies? You want to go TV? Uh, Where do you want to go? We we just did TV. So let's go to movies. You want to go to movies? Let's go to to everything, everywhere, all at once. Come on. All right. There you go. Right. Okay. Right, we, that's the one we have to talk about, for yeah, God's sakes. Yeah, yeah. My, tell I tell think me. that was my top performing review of the year. Really? What's wow. it really? Literally. Wow. Out of everything I did, wow. I think that because people just... They they want to talk about it's that so movie. funny how that works, isn't it? Because yeah. like you, because, because that movie is such a smaller movie, and I remember people. T- I didn't see that movie yeah, yeah. until I'm gonna let you get your thoughts on this. Really? But I, I didn't get a chance to see that because everyone's like, I'm I'm the parallel universe guy. Like that's I mean I'm fascinated by it. I believe dreams are parallel universes. Like all mm. these types of things. I'm like I'm fascinated by it. Before. Marvel made it cool, right? I was, I was, and then, and then parallel universes. I was in the multiverses before. That's right. Dr. That's right. The multiverse. Because when they say multiverse now, they go, oh, that's a comic book thing. Like, no, no. it's not a comic book thing. Um, but yes, but this movie comes out. I took a long time to see it. It's, mm. it's brilliant. But John, please go. No, Why did you choose? Uh, yeah, exactly. It's brilliant. It really, what a surprising movie to come out of nowhere. First of all, all Asian cast. So you're taking a chance there. Then you're throwing in multiverses with no foundation in Marvel or DC or anything. And you're just introducing everything step by step as it goes along. But you're not forgetting that the number one thing is the connection of the family, the story of the family. They establish that so well. You bring in Jamie Lee Curtis, great stuff. Michelle Yao to lead the cast. And then Ki Hui Kwan, bringing him in from the frozen tundra (laughs) to come back into the little sunlight and everybody loves him in the movie. In yeah. fact, I got offended the other day when they when it started going around that Barry Keegan scene from Banshees of Inisherin, which is a great scene, by the way. Him and Carrie Condon are fantastic. People are like, if there's any justice, they'll just give him the award. I'm like, y'all can shut up. All right. <laughs> Ki Hui Kwan deserves that award. Barry Keegan was great, but Ki Hui Kwan deserves that award for what he did in that film. And Michelle Yao as well deserves to be up there with Kate Blanchett going toe to toe all the way to the end. 
the movie itself just delivers a very powerful story about family and disconnect and how to reconnect as well as introducing these insane multiverses that are not just done for goofy fun, even with hot dog fingers, they're done to really show you the different stages of how relationships can go, the different possibilities of what can be in your life if you just make a decision in one moment or another, mm -hmm. what it can lead to. And I love that they brought it all to life. And then right at the end, Stephanie Hsu, the daughter, she's so great in the back and forth with her and Michelle Yao. I'm gonna cry talking about it. Just that ending and the conversation they have. If you've ever had a difficult time with your parents, finding that, that peace between you two, there is no way to quantify that with any kind of wealth. It is incredible to see it so well done here in this movie. Yeah, it was. And I think that what what really worked for me also was... And the visuals. The so, visuals yeah. were incredible. And I think that it it, it did a lot of... I, I, everything that you said about family and that emotional level is, is, is spot on. But I also think that when the lore of getting the people who want to see that science fiction... I mean, yeah. it, it pulled on elements from the Matrix, right? It pulled sure, on those things. I sure. love the idea that you can tap into the multiverse and learn those skills and be able to do these things and understand. And and there was so much that was going on in that and that if you, you really got to lock in. And Jamie Lee Curtis, by the way, who's getting a lot of buzz, and rightfully so, yeah. what she's able to do inside of it, it's a it's a ballsy movie. It's a bizarre movie. Um, a hot dog finger's a little bit too much for me, but I, <laughs> but, I, but, I, but, I, but I understood what they were going for, and I think it That's made, your Tom Hanks of the thing. Yeah, yeah. I, th I, think, I think it makes sense for what was going on but it was yeah. a couple of moments that like that that when they went to that because it is a comedy too it's as yeah. much as a comedy as anything else oh, as yeah. much as a drama it's it's a comedy and it plays into a bunch of different things and but bringing back Kehu Kwan um I mean what he's able to do um in that role and that opening that, that scene of him <sighs> ultimately being the one to let her know what's going down mm -hmm. and us too. Yeah. Like he lets us know like, Oh, that's where we're going with this. Um, it's a brilliant movie. It's, it's visually incredible. Mm -hmm. So I think it, it deserves the praise that it's getting. Do you, you think it wins it. best picture? I don't know. Dan, I don't know. I don't think it's, I, 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 I don't know. Okay. I what? think the Academy is still old. <laughs> I think a large portion of the Academy is still yeah. old. And okay. I'm not saying that older people won't get the movie. I just think that it's a little out there. Yeah. For older voters, some yeah. older voters, and and in a year where it's weird, a lot of the quote unquote awards movies actually fell short. Yeah, like um, Empire of Light, mm -hmm. Babylon, Armageddon, so uh, yeah. Armageddon, time, like movies that just aren't getting that buzz. So I think yeah. it does open the race up quite a bit. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be the most shocking thing in the world, but no, I don't think it wins. I do feel like we went through a wormhole though, like seven or eight years ago, because yeah. it's like I feel like if if I was if it was Back to the Future. And I was Doc Brown, and I was asked at the time travel. It's like, all right, future boy, who's the lead, <laughs> who's the lead runner for best supporting actor in 2022? And they're like, Kihi Kwan. Like, Kihi Kwan. <laughs> Short rounds. Right, like, right. It's like, it's, Data. It's, it's, so, yeah, it's so unbelievable. Right, and right. yet, like, it's like, it's, yeah. and I said this when I was talking about it on my channel. It's not like one of those things where it's like you had an actor who came back, and everyone's just like, give him the Oscar. It's a right. great story. Both him and Brendan Fraser this year. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yes, it is. But if either or both of them were to win, it's also Apart from that, yeah, one hundred percent deserve. One hundred percent because their yeah. performances Merited. are it reminds, so good. Not he wasn't as a, in the obscurity as as they were, but I would say John Travolta when he was yeah. in Pulp Fiction was yeah. similar yeah. Yeah. to that kind of run. But Dan, overall thoughts of the of the movie in general, and then we'll move on to um to your pick. I know you guys all said it. I just yeah. think it's really interesting that we've had in the last. Well, they were released in the same calendar year. Three what I consider to be outstanding movies about. Uh, generational mm. um, uh, history inside, yeah, of, inside of non-white yeah. families. Yeah. We had Encanto, yes. we had Turning Red from Pixar, oh, and then yeah. we had Everything Everywhere All at Once. And they all three, I thought, were so richly yeah. told. And again, when I talk about perspective, it's, it's, and it's important to make movies from different cultural perspectives because you know the interactions in families around the world are different from... Sure the interactions in other families yeah, around the world. Yeah. And to see three stories like that, that were brought to life so beautifully, yeah. I think is, was so refreshing for me because it just brings you that extra perspective. Yeah. And you if, know, cause I don't come from that background. No, no, totally. And, and that's why if you to see those movies, and if you yeah. push into TV, I think that's why I enjoyed Ms. Marvel so much. Mm. Um, Same. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The family stuff I love. The more, more the, than the superhero stuff. superhero stuff. I was me like, too. yeah. yeah. yeah I wanted too. more of the family stuff. Me yeah, too. I agree. But, but I don't know if that's on, that's potentially on the list. We'll, we'll, we'll wait. Um, but uh, Dan, so let's go. We're gonna go stay with movies here. Stay with movies. What, do, what do you got? Uh, well, I mean, John, you mentioned it briefly. Uh, the Banshees of Inner Sharon. Yeah, man. Uh, uh, one of those movies that I think the title might put some people off. <laughs> but it's so. I mean, I love Martin McDonough. Mm -hmm. 
And Bruges is it's so great. Brendan Gleeson and Colin Farrell are such a great team. My family has Irish heritage, and so oh, I was wow. brought up with an appreciation of Irish history and, and Irish, you know, not as, like, necessarily, like, versed in it because there were a lot of historical uh, metaphors and allegory in this movie that I didn't even pick up on mm. when I first saw it, and it's interesting to read about, but just an appreciation for that culture. And uh, it's hilarious. It's dramatic. It's a movie about a guy who doesn't want to be friends with another guy anymore. That's literally the movie, but it's symbolic of so much else. Yeah. And uh, I just, it's not a movie for everyone, <laughs> but I loved it yeah. so much. As a purveyor of Irish cinema, I, <laughs> I was so, from the first trailer, I was looking forward to this one. And the studio reached out to me when I did my trailer reaction and they were like, my God, thank you for doing mm. something to highlight this film because they were they knew they were pushing a boulder up a hill with this small story set in the past yeah. that is a microcosm of the Irish Civil War that happened after um, they fought off the Brits and they fought within themselves. Um, and this, I, and, and then having all the, having, yes, you're bringing back Brendan Gleeson, Colin Farrell, but I mean, neither one of them are, you know, going to lead a film to a box office. So all of this stuff, plus you're bringing Carrie Condon in, which I thought was great. Mm -hmm. And Barry Keegan in a smaller role. It's the acting, it's the writing, it's the character, it's the nuance, all of it. That's here to enjoy the hu the dark humor of Irish films is there from moment one. And Dan is absolutely right. If you're not into that kind of humor, you're not going to get this movie. Yeah. But if you are into it, this movie is going to work for you on so many levels. And I saw people like choose sides, which is kind of opposite of the point of the movie. But <laughs> yeah. I saw people choose sides. And I'm like, this is fascinating because it is so, so well acted, well directed. And there are some painfully uh, devastating scenes between some broken people on this small island um, with Barry Keegan and Colin Farrell reacting to these things. And also... The idea of Brendan Gleeson doing what he does to himself as a representation of how deep into his um, psychosis he's gone in wanting to separate himself from this person. So, so everything you guys said, I agree with as far as performances and and I think it's gorgeous. Mm. I think that and I, and the humor, I understand it for sure. I I'm just at that level right now. It's so every time someone says, "What's a movie that everyone loves?" that you're like. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's this one. Yeah. I don't know. It's like, I think it's a really brilliantly directed yeah, film. Yeah, yeah. Colin Farrell. And this movie is made like without knowing anything. I, I wish I would have seen it way before anybody else did. Mm, right. Yeah. Because this movie is, is essentially made for me because of Brendan Gleeson and, and Colin Farrell, some of my favorite actors, Brendan Gleeson from back from Braveheart yeah. and Colin Farrell, I think is one of, even though he's a celebrity and he's a star, I think he's one of the most, underrated and underappreciated actors out there today mm -hmm. um and i think that uh, everything about it from when they were in the, the in bruges together and 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 all this stuff and i'm like okay this and, and barry Co i think it's like keogan it's Keog oh is it Keog sorry, i had to look sorry. it up Keog i had to look it up yeah it's, if yeah. i get a sil literally if i get a syllable you, you, wrong you I'm hear about it yeah, <laughs> about, yeah same same well, i apologize same. To it, it, yeah but, um but he and he's he's just one of those up-and-coming guys that are you know even from dunkirk i remember seeing him yeah but it's something about it. Like my wife, it's it just not for her. She's like, yeah. I'm done. And she <laughs> left, she left like 45 minutes into, she's like, let me know how it ends. You made it 45? May, may, maybe, maybe minutes. even 45. <laughs> it was when you just mentioned the Brendan Gleeson thing, when he did it, when he did that thing the very first time, yeah, yeah, yeah. she's like, I'm done. I'm done. And she yeah. walks, she goes, tell me what you think. Because I had told her, so everybody's raving about this movie, got all these nominations. Yeah. And she's like, all right, let's watch it. And she's like, well, what'd you think? And I go, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I loved it. Yeah. I, I enjoyed watching it. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to be one for me where, I mean, Coy was like, it, it, it's on you guys, number one on your list. It's like, and it's like, I'm like, what am I missing? Hearing the points, I get it. But I think for this particular thing, it just didn't land with me the way it landed with everybody yeah, it's else. It's subjective. Yeah, it's, it's, it's subjective. It's, subjective. it's a good movie, though. I understand that. It's a good movie. It just didn't land for me. Yeah. Um, all right. Speaking of which, what did land for me? If we're going to go into, um, everybody talked about the movie. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to go into TV now. Go back into TV. And I'm going to bring this up because there's only two episodes into it. I'm bringing up 1923. Wow. It's only two episodes in, but it's a very special show. It is some, There's something about it, and I made this point um, the other day, and I'll make it again here today. Movie stars don't sell movies anymore the way that they used to back in the day when we were kids. They don't. But movie stars sell TV shows. 
and they get ratings for TV shows because of what we just talked about before. When you are subscribed to a platform already, whether it's HBO Max, Disney+, Plus, Amazon Prime, whatever it is, if you're already subscribed to those things and you see, or Paramount Plus in this, in this case, and you see Harrison Ford and Helen Mirren, well, I'm subscribed to that. I'm going to check it out. Yeah. Or if you're not, you might pay the $4.99 to see a series for at least a little bit with Harrison Ford and Helen Mirren. And that was the show I was talking about before. I, I don't even have the guy's name yet, but we will know it. And I'm, this will be one of the last times I ever ever forget the guy's name there's the the, an actor who plays harrison ford's nephew who's on the african plains at this point this guy is going to be the guy that people start going to for these roles Mm. he's got that machismo he's got that thing he could have played solo he could have played indiana jones Mm. i never even seen this guy before he's just that guy he's got that thing and when you watch this in episode two is where he really shines but the show and i'm not i don't watch yellowstone I watched like I watched like mm. maybe four episodes of the first season, liked it, but it was it's in seventy five different places. You got to yeah. find. I know, and, and people tell me it's on Peacock. I'll eventually get to Paramount it. Plus. Or, oh, it's Peacock. not right, right. It's you're not right. on Paramount Plus. Now, right. That's, it's all over the place. Yeah, three is on Peacock. The, re, the, the, the right. reruns are on Peacock. Yes. the new ones are on Paramount. It, 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 it's they're, all the they're all over the place. It's they're all over the place. So, but yeah. so Cut the other one. So what's it called? Eighteen what? Eighteen ninety. Eighteen eighty three. Eighteen eighty three is the one with Sam Elliott, right? So I and that's another one I didn't watch, but then. But as I was just mentioning, Harrison Ford, Helen Mirren, I'm going to yeah. check it out. It is two episodes in, but we're just talking about the best 2022 so far, mm-hmm. and I'm loving this show. Wow. I am just on the edge of my seat watching it. My wife is really into it. We watched it. Okay. It's got everything for everyone. There's a nice moment in the end of two that I was like, I reminded of, uh, of like the, the romantic movies that my wife loves, and it's, it's just it's a blend of these different things. Um, and it's it's brilliant. I really love you guys haven't had a chance to see it yet, though, right? I'm no. not inducted into the Yellowstone universe. No. But I'm t- <laughs> but this is a way that you might because it's a prequel. Uh-huh. I don't feel like I'm lost at all. Like okay. I know the Duttons. I know the Duttons mm-hmm. are part of the, the what what we all follow. But that's but that's basically all you need to know. I mean I I mean because I was told by other people. Well, yeah. Well, that character is somewhat connected to that. I, who cares? <laughs> uh, it doesn't it, it doesn't take away from anything in it. Maybe eventually if I go back and watch, I go ah you know. Yeah. But but this but for what I'm enjoying right now, I love this show. But this will be the shortest segment so far because I'm the only one to watch it. Yeah, um, all right, now we'll now we'll you go. You talked me into it though because I, I quit on Yellowstone during the second season. It, it got my bro- so good. my brother. Did That's too. What I keep hearing. It got I, too I soapy. My brother soapy. did too. My yeah. brother bailed on on it, but yeah. this is not a soapy okay, show. Good. Okay. This I show I, now maybe it gets there, but this show is awesome. Yeah. Um. All right, we we'll go back to John. John, where you want to oh, go? TV. Uh, I guess TV. All right, where do you want to go? What do we got here? Uh, so I feel like press your luck. I know, right? Well, yeah. look, we might as well talk about Miss Marvel, right? Yeah. I mean, go ahead, we, please. I mean, we, please. I mean, this is. I didn't. I didn't know what to expect from this film. Look, we're three older dudes talking about this show, but it worked, right? It absolutely worked for the most part. Loved everything about the way they presented this character, the way they established the family, the way they established her desire to be a hero. Because the the Marvel universe now has to operate in the reality that the Marvel universe exists within its own reality. Yeah. So how are people going to react to it? So having her come in, especially as Kamala Khan has already been established in the comics and people had high expectations for what to expect here, was a hell of a task that they took on. And I think they, for the most part, absolutely knocked it out of the park with the performances, with the connection with the uh, with the family here, with the way they developed her role as she was going along in the show itself. And I liked that it was a new style of direction, a new approach to telling this kind of story. I thought it was inventive. It asked you to catch up. It did not waste time making sure you caught up. It kept going, and you're going to have to catch up, get all the slang words, get all the code words, mm-hmm. get all the anagrams, get all the stuff that they're fo- uh, they're um, throwing in as visual stuff. They're m- adjusting the camera, moving stuff around, and oh, they're taking you into multiple universes, dimensions, and also messing around with presenting uh, new characters that are going to pay dividends down the road and new villains that are going to pay dividends down the road. And I thought they just absolutely got it right. Um, and I was really surprised by it because I... I did not go in expecting much, and I was blown away. Yeah, same. So for me, I didn't know enough about the character, and it was when I saw it, I was intrigued by it because I was intrigued, saying, "You know, this is going to be a show I can watch with my with my right. ten year uh, then yeah. ten year old." So, and I saw the Scott Pilgrim stuff, and I'm like, "This is going to be a fun show for us to watch." I'm like, "I don't necessarily think this is geared for me." I didn't watch one episode with my ten year old. I watched the whole thing by myself, and I loved it. And what I've said over and over and over again is the fact that what I learned a lot about was not it was. And I agree with you. It's the family stuff 
more so than the superhero stuff that I really played, but I also learned things inside of the the Muslim culture that I didn't know before. Yes, hundred percent. But it was inviting. Mm-hmm. It was inviting, and it was, it was like, accessible. It, yes, yes, and it did. It didn't. It didn't make you feel like you were on the outside. I said, learn. And I learned and I wanted to eat everything that was on the table because it was so delicious that when that family had that food, oh the dinner and I'm like, yeah. please yeah. give it to me. Um, but it they didn't were, shame you for not knowing. No, that's what I'm saying. Yes. I felt it was and inviting. It was in, so it was, smart. It was inviting on yes. how they did it. And yes. it was like, it was teaching you, but it was inside of the family dynamic yes. of what I could relate to. And I think she, by the way, um, for the, the, the actress who plays um, um, Kamala is so wonderful. Mm-hmm. And she just has, she's fantastic. She yeah, has, star. she is going to be, mark my words, what everyone is talking about in the Marvels. Sorry, Brie Larson. Ooh, maybe. So, and, and, and who's the actress who plays Rambo? Oh, um, uh, Tiana Paris, I think. Yeah. Nothing against both of those ladies. I think they're really, they're really good. They, they, she's she's going to steal the show. Yep. She's going. I saw just a brief thing from D twenty three that they showed of that of that trailer. It was like a two three minute trailer, mm-hmm. whatever it was. She's got one this particular scene where she's in space, and they show both. They saw all three of them. It's the only thing I really remember as much because she just does this. She's got that thing. She's so likable. She's funny. I believe everything she's saying, and I I think that the Marvels franchise should go with her even after, mm. after, after the marvels i think you focus i think she should be the captain marvel i watched i watched captain marvel the other uh, watching that we're doing a rewatch um i think brie larson is great in movies like room and mm. and the other things she she it's a little kind of acty in in this when i go like there's a couple things she's doing she's doing that thing i've been calling chase face lately she's just this thing where she just kind of go well she she, she goes and she comes after <laughs> you it's like and she's a lot of this stuff going on Hmm. Huh. Yes. And I was like, no, just, just no. But I think anyway, I think, I think there's a better role in the Marvel universe for Brie Larson in the Marvel universe. I think down the road, there's a recast or past something. There was a bet. There was a better role. And I wonder if they'll ever find it in the future because she's such a damn good actress. She's a great actress. I just but don't think this I is the role. This was, the I don't think I, I wonder how much was direction. Yeah. Could, could be because part. There have yeah, been sure. other actors that, uh, like, Black Widow, Scarlett Johansson, for oh, example. Yeah. I think that she was all right in Iron Man too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But right. Then they right. gave her character right. more. I agree. Yeah. And I think yeah. that that role grew. So I wonder how much of it because if I said that Brie Larson, I think is a really, really good, really good actor. Yeah. yeah. I just, I, 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 I understand the intention of her character in mm-hmm. Captain Marvel, yeah. but I feel like there was a, a vision for it that didn't quite translate. Yeah, yeah. But Iman Vellani, I, I mentioned Vellani's in my review. Awesome, oh. dude. So I don't good. ever want to hear somebody say that they don't watch a movie or TV show because they don't think they can relate to it. Right. Because if it's well made, then you can. Yeah, because that's, that's right. what storytelling is. That's I've never right. been to space. I love Star Trek. <laughs> right. I can't relate to what it's like to be on a spaceship right. and fly around in the galaxy. <laughs> exactly. But right. you make a show that makes There's me always elements you can relate to. There's always Absolutely. elements, and that's why I, I, you know, the one thing that I talk about is like, you know, it's it's sort of become. It's, a, it's one of the most important things in Hollywood, and it's also become a buzzword, diversity, inclusion, and representation. Mm. It's incredibly important, and we've seen so much extra, and I'm the most perfect person to talk about this. Um, <laughs> Truth. But I think that that show, I will always say, is a perfect example of what I think that really means, which yeah. is yes. to take a cultural perspective from someone uh, and a team who understands that life, who translates it into a movie. It's not, you know, I think that some studios use it as a marketing gimmick. A hundred percent. It doesn't feel forced. It, it doesn't feel forced. It feels completely inauthentic. It yeah. doesn't feel forced. It feels this earned. This feels, yes. I was so fascinated yes. by the dynamic in that family, their history. I didn't partition. I didn't know anything about yeah. that. Yeah. Like everything that was about that I loved. And then she would fight some bad guys and I was just like, uh. <laughs> right, right. It was more about the family. Because that yeah. they just, yeah. it, I'd seen that before uh-huh. and I hadn't seen yeah. All of these char- great characters and that rich family, yeah. I, I just, I, I really connected to that yeah. part of the show. And she, I agree. Like the, the reason I'm yeah. excited about the Marvels, it's her, is because. Of Wait her. till you see that scene. She's she okay. going to win you over. She has a confidence beyond her years. She, she does. She, yeah, does. she does. Yeah. All right. So we'll go to Dan. So Dan, let's go in the movie realm, man. Let's go okay. back to the movies and let's see. We'll pick some. We'll what pick have we some. not talked about? We have not talked about. We're never going to get to all of this we're, stuff. So let's. Yeah. See. We. Oh, there's a lot. Holy moly! There's so much to talk about. Um. Let's see. Let's talk about Nope. Okay, Whoa. let's do it. We haven't talked right. about it. No, we have not. I know that some people were let down by it. I, I For me, it um, it didn't co- uh, gel as much as uh, Jordan Peele's other two films. Hmm. But I really enjoyed it. Uh, first of all, I, I think when you talk about growth as a director, technically, um, it's it's one of my, it's my, maybe my favorite use of IMAX this year. Hmm. But it, it's not like Avatar, and it's not like, you know, these movies that are like shot on IMAX. It's, 
he, as a director with his DP, he understood the possibilities of the size of the frame. And there, there are scenes that's just the farm and the sky. But Jordan Peele, in constructing the movie, knew that with that size of frame, you can make it so that you're looking at the sky. You're trying to find the ship or the thing. You see a shadow over here, and you're like, what's that? It was, a, it was such a smart Mm -hmm. brilliant way of using the format and um it also had me like there's a moment in a there's a scene where they're in the stables and it's mm. there's something that happens oh, yeah. it's yeah. not even the thing yeah, that you're right. worried I know what you're talking it's about. a total yeah. Yeah. like yes yeah, but it was horrifying it I was, was like i was literally going like no i i said the name of the <laughs> yeah. i said the name of the like, yeah. nope um, and then to bring in the idea of... Uh, I think he does too at that point, too, yeah, by the way. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> to bring in that idea of this aspect of film history yeah. and the idea of uh, a cultural appropriation yeah. starting at the very inception of motion pictures as an art form. Yeah. And then on top of that, the alien you know, stuff. I mean, I, like I said, I think the, if there was a big criticism for the movie is it had so many ideas that it didn't all quite come together as well as his other two films. But I also think that it's somewhat being underrated because I thought that it showed so much potential, uh, not, not that potential, but so much growth mm. um, uh, directorially, especially on the technical mm. level. And also, by the way, the characters um, were so just like mm. you understood Kiki Palmer and, and um, Daniel Kaluuya, Daniel Kaluuya mm. and that relationship between them. Yeah. And that moment where like, they just get super excited about the, and, I mean, it's just like, you understood that the crazy uh, cinematographer that was coming out to yeah. capture the impossible. Michael thing. Wincott. Oh, yeah. I loved bringing there him was, back to yeah. yeah. bring him back. Yeah. The crow and yeah. the doors. The doors. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. The doors. Robin Hood. I think that, I think that it's sort of suffers from comparison mm -hmm. to his other movies, but I still think that it was a really, really, really strong movie. He is Wells. He is Orson Welles. He has come out, and I know people are going, oh. He has come out with a film that was so good in Get Out that everything he does will be compared to it yeah, for right. eternity. For so eternity. Shyamalan, so Shyamalan did too up top. Yeah, yeah, but I but have much more did. faith with Jordan Peele. And I, I think what, he, what you have to understand is you're watching an artist grow, mm -hmm. and you're watching an artist take swings within yeah. the construct of what he's created. And that's what Nope is. And I loved it for that. And Dan, it's great you point that out. Didn't even think about it, but that's how he viscerally brings you into the film by making you look to the left yeah. and right of the screen. Yeah. And yeah. It's brilliant how he just kind of immerses you in it. And I loved it. And again, the cultural appropriation is absolutely correct. The way, again, he does it with every one of his films. It's not teaching you, it's just showing you this is what happened, this is what it was. It's If you want to explore it, you can. And I love that he does that. But he never loses the connection between his characters. Even in Us, I liked Us for what it showed you about that family. Here, same thing, and what, what they're going through. And the faith they have in each other, right? And what yeah. happens at the end, really. That moment between them at the end. Oh, it was so devastating. But still having the humor of the guy coming in, putting on the, putting up the audiovisual equipment, still not losing the humor within the madness of this darkness and the horror images. And you're right to bring up that stuff in the well, thing. But also what happens, the stuff falling from the yeah. sky, like, uh, what is all of and this? That, that one so, shot geez. that was inside. Yes. That was like 10 seconds long was maybe the scariest thing in the whole movie because right. you just and you see this reality of what's happening. It's 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 these little things. So, you're watching a genius filmmaker. Yeah, well, so I I can't disagree with any of that. I think that the filmmaking in general, what he's done, and and as we were talking earlier, and there's, there's really no movie star right now, but there are a handful of directors that will get you into theater without knowing anything about what their mm, movies are about, yeah. right? Like think like Nolan is Nolan. somebody, Tarantino, Scorsese, Edgar Wright for Edgar me, Wright. Ari Aster now, yeah. and and now and and Jordan Peele. I Cameras. think is and well, Jordan Peele doesn't. You don't have to. You didn't really know what this movie was about until whatever was coming out. People started guessing yeah. it was about aliens and things. But um, but I did, and I think that I agree with. I do agree with what you said i think that he's guilty by comparison or whatever um because i didn't love this movie but i can't disagree with anything you said about the filmmaking aspect and the idea that he's taking swings and that too i didn't yeah. i just didn't respond to the story as much because as you mentioned that barn scene if that's where and i know the whole point was not go that way yeah I wish they would have went that way because <laughs> yeah. if they went, because that shows up and I'm like, whoa, yeah. I'm like, and <laughs> yeah, then it turns out that it was just kind of a misdirect. And what it really was, I was like, bah. it was very twilight zoney. And, and I think that's what he was going for. But 
cannot disagree with the relationships and the acting yeah. and the filmmaking process. Is this the story for me? As we were talking about previous yeah. things, it didn't get me. Yeah. Um, but I, but it didn't take away from the fact that what is he doing next? I want to see what he is directing next because every time he does, it, it lands. I also think that barn scene is him showing I could do this. If I know. I wanted I to. Yes, I it's so easy. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And so that's. But he wants to do. No, something. I know the point. He's going for I know. something else. I know. I know. I got but, it. But, but I will say this about barn scene. One last thing. Arguably, maybe in the top five, top three greatest horror scenes of the year, and Ooh. it was a misdirect. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. there have yeah. been some great. It was, it was terrifying. Scenes. It was terrifying. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go now, and I'm gonna stick <laughs> with movies as well. Um, and where I'm gonna grab. I think that I'm probably going to go and go with um, Hustle. Ooh. Um, okay. Hustle's a movie that I don't think enough people saw. I don't think a lot of people... Guilty. It, it, <laughs> because people, I think, right away were thinking that it was going to be just another Adam Sandler Netflix movie. You know, and it was one of these movies that people didn't understand whether what it was going to be. And I think that when Adam Sandler really turns it on inside of an acting performance and he can go this is a combination where there's some humor in it but it's not it's not about that it's it's it was it's a nice story about the fact that where, where he is um as as a scout and he has and adam sandler has a uh, a, a love for basketball he always has he goes and he plays he just goes and plays with random people all yeah. the time and you, there's vi videos about it happen all the time but it's about a scout that is you know he was attached to um who's the who plays the owner do you remember john who did you, no i don't oh, oh no it's robert duvall it's oh robert yeah duvall. right oh that's so right robert duvall robert duvall it's been, it's been uh, so, long. Yeah. so robert duvall plays the uh play, plays the owner and then ben foster mm. is the is the owner's son and he's sent down on the road and he finds it and he's just he's broken down and he's he's married to queen latifah and queen latifah and he, him have this great relationship where she's supporting him and he's going out he's got to go out on the road again as a scout he mm -hmm. thought he finally couldn't do it and he goes out and he finds this dude and i can't remember the actor's name but uh, he's a he's a player that was he's a basketball player yeah um heard and gomez yeah yeah yeah, yeah and he was really good too for yeah. some and and it was just again a movie that i watched with my wife not knowing anything about it and just felt good after watching it and i and i and they're starting to get more buzz on sandler's performance as of late and i'm glad because you as you mentioned jeff snyder the other day who said i thought the performance was great but it should, why are people talking about him now i said because it was a great performance yeah. it's one of those performances that i i'm glad isn't getting looked over because it looked like it was going to mm -hmm. um I just think it was a very special movie, and I watched it at a time when I just watched everything everywhere all at once. I had watched all these movies, and I said, "This movie's going to land for me in in my top ten because it's mm -hmm. just so, it's just so enjoyable." But did uh, you didn't get a chance to see it, Dan? Did you see it, John? Well, yeah, yeah. yeah so I didn't get a chance to see it. I just you chose not to. Yeah, you chose not yeah, to. I watched yeah. other stuff. I no, do think he's one of the most disrespected actors. Right? Yeah, I'm telling you, watch this movie, dude. I'm telling you, he's it's he's he's really good in it. Two things can be true. Adam Sandler is one of the most disrespected actors yeah. working today, yeah. and he's made some of the worst movies. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. Yeah, let's play Twister with your sister. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, he turned Pacino into an ad man, which I thought oh was great, God. Jack yeah. and Joe. Cool. But yeah, I mean, this is the thing about this film that I think works so well. This is his reign over me yes. after Punch Drunk Love. Uh huh. People, because they're so caught up with the uncut gem stuff, yep. I think yep. they yep. looked over Hustle, and Hustle is a fantastic performance from him. But also the story, the way he connects to that family as a way to reconnect himself back into his own family, his yeah. own relationship and where he's at in his life. You know, you, you work a job long enough, you become cynical. You just become so caught up in the job and the parameters of the job. You, you forget don't that say there's a human. <laughs> <laughs> you forget that there's a human aspect to it all and that you are a human being. And there are things that you have not come to terms with or not um, resolved within yourself. And something happens if you're fortunate to trigger that in you to go on that yeah. self exploration. And I think along with him helping that family, along with helping this guy's dream come true, he in a way kind of reinvigorates himself. Kind of like City Slickers, right? I mean, he has to go find his smile. He went and went and found his smile yeah. in this movie. And I think you're right. I think, because I, I hesitated on the film for weeks. Yeah. And then finally, one day, a friend of mine was like, dude, you're a basketball fan. Why the fuck haven't you watched this? So, That's what Dan said, though, because yeah. the problem is that you just, it's it's like a crapshoot with him yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Oh, but, no. 100%. But, but I'll tell you when it's not a crapshoot. When he's doing dramatic yeah, roles, yeah, how yeah. many of his yeah. dramatic roles have you gone? Nah, that one wasn't good. No. How, I mean, he hasn't done a ton of them. Even Spanglish, Spanglish wasn't that great in the film. But yeah. he's but he's really good in it. That's funny people, which is oh yeah. five minutes too long. Yeah. But he's yeah. good in it. But he's, he's good really in good in it. Yeah. Anytime he's, he puts this dramatic, because he's, you can tell, and I don't know if you've had a chance to meet him. Right, he's the sweetest guy in the world. That's he's, what I hear. He's a, he's a really nice guy. And yeah, we had lunch last week. But yeah, <laughs> you've it, but you've been in the. But you, I saw him at Patty's. But, but there's time. people that you've met inside of this space that is like. But he he used to come to the improv a lot, and he would do and just and he just was like very humble, chill. But he's got that thing. In general, when you meet him, 
that's the guy yeah. that you're seeing in that, that likable guy. And there's a reason why he succeeded and he's got his friends around him all this stuff because that's the guy. When you see the guy that you like on, and, and even when you cut into something like Uncut Gems yeah. and he goes that dark, right? There's a reason why he can tap into that. And it's a reason why the comedian is always, you know, the sad clown because you're able to do that. And I, that's that's why I thought it was one of the more unappreciated movies. Yeah, you, please watch the variety conversation with him and Brendan Fraser. Oh it yeah, is 30, 45 yeah. minutes of some of the that's best. I, I saw I saw I saw a little bit of it, but um, but oh. John, we're gonna go. So let's go. Let's go yeah, TV, yeah. John. Yeah, All let's right. go to. T isn't that yeah? Cause what do we got left here? Uh, got tons, uh, tons of it on there. We got TV, some certain things. You want to talk about the old man? Did yes. you guys see the old yeah, man? I sure I did. I oh, sure did. Go on. ahead. Let's talk about it. Jeff Bridges. Talk about coming out of the cold. Jeff Bridges overcame, was it leukemia or something? that he got No, no. He, he found out during this the filming. That's why it was so short. Gotcha. During the filming, yes. he found out he had this. And so to see what he was able to do with this character and come back and remind people yet again. And you bought some earlier, uh, either on camera or off camera, this idea of stars now can sell TV shows over movies, this is where they work. And Jeff Bridges is coming in with a show like this. I cannot recommend it enough to you, Dan, if you haven't seen I'll it. I'll tell you why and even more so. It's yeah. one of the best performances of his career. Um, yeah. And bringing in Amy Brenneman, who oh, I haven't she's seen so in good. forever. And heat. having their chemistry. Go, go ahead. No, she was Heat. Yeah, she was in Heat. heat. Yeah. Exactly. They had a similar similar role in this. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. You could, you could be faulted for thinking. With yeah. a twist. With a twist. With a twist. Yeah. With a twist, exactly. I loved her in NYPD Blue. That's yes. where I first saw So to see her still keep doing her thing, but to see the breath of this. And then John Lithgow. Get reminded oh, I love John that John Lithgow, Lithgow can deliver heel or evil stuff when he wants to. He's got that within him. It's so incredible to see this. And it's great writing. The pacing of it totally works. The drama and the tension. And who is, what's um uh, her name from? Um, his daughter? Yeah, his daughter. Oh, gosh, she was in really uh, uh, Arrested Development. Yeah, 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 yeah. I loved her in Search Party, the five seasons of Search yes. Party. Oh, Alia Shawkat. Yeah, Alia Shawkat. She's Shockett. fantastic. She comes in here and her role to play in all of this yes. is fantastic. You don't know which way to turn. You don't know who's telling the truth. You don't know what's going on half the time. And that's the genius of it. And going back and forth in time to connect Afghanistan to present day and what he did. And the actors, they got to play the younger versions of themselves. Mm -hmm. Incredible yes. as well. Well, it's crazy. So it's got a great breath to it and fantastic writing yeah. and great tension. Uh, agree with everything that John said and a few things that, and I think that when you're watching it, or if you choose to watch it, um, the, the, realize that it's a very abrupt ending. They are making a season two. Oh my God. Yeah. It's, we thought there was another episode. But it's because <laughs> so mad. What you find out is because you they found out that Jeff Bridges was sick and yeah. they had to just cut it right. short. And and it's clear as day when it when it's cut mm -hmm. because it's not a it's not a season finale. It's just like no. oh we had to stop filming. Um but one of the main reasons that this show got me so excited for Star Wars Skeleton Crew. Because John Watts is, oh, right. is show running that director. Yeah. He directs the first two. The first, first two the episodes. whole season's great. The first two episodes are arguably the best mm -hmm. um, of this show. It is intense. It is it is some of John Watts' best work. I think he's done some great stuff. This is some of his best work. But everything that John just said, there's something about this character, what Jeff Bridges is able to do, and just yeah, in, in, in general. Well, but you, Dan, but, you got to watch my show. Yeah, Dan. And, you got, and you move it into this position. You're like, oh. Oh, and it, it, there's so many of those oh moments. Mm -hmm. And it's not even as black and white of John Lithgow being, because mm -hmm. John Lithgow, there's a lot to them. There's yeah. a lot. It, it had like, it, it almost had like a, um, if if 24 didn't have to be 24 episodes, right? <laughs> uh, if, 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 yeah. if you had that kind of character, but it's, he's he's got like an old kind of Jack Bauer-ish thing too, but in seven episodes. So it's a brilliant show. I'm glad John brought it up. But um, right. all right, Dan, let's go back to movies now, because you've seen tons of movies. I have so seen let's tons go, of let's, movies. Let's do some movies. Yeah, and a handful of TV shows. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Hmm. This, it's it's like a paralysis from just so many different picks. You know what? Let's talk about because we yeah we could talk about the we want to talk about the Batman. Let's, let's talk, talk about, about the Batman. Batman. Of yeah. Let's talk about Please. the Batman. Batman is my favorite comic book character. Yeah. So um, I've seen many. I've seen literally every Batman movie. I, I, my channel earlier this year, I reviewed literally every, every single feature length Batman movie ever made. That's awesome. Um, animated everything. And uh, I really, I was kind of, I, I mean, I was looking forward to this movie because I love Batman, but I was also like, what are they doing? What are they doing? Yeah. <laughs> I love what they did with this. Yeah. It's, I get why people didn't like it, but we've done so many rounds of Batman is the, is the, uh, you know, dark guy skulking in the shadows. And that's yeah. where we started this movie. He's mm -hmm. literally the mm -hmm. hero skulking in the shadows. To have a movie, it's the ending of this movie is kind of the anti-Dark Knight. Sure. 
to have a movie where we end in the place where Batman mm. is the symbol for goodness, and he's basically saying, "I've lived my life in the shadows, and I've realized that that doesn't that doesn't that only creates more darkness. Like I need to be the symbol for what is possible." Like, I love that. Yeah. I, I love the idea that moving forward, we're going to have a Batman that is a symbol to Gotham City of uh, anti-evil. Yeah, and, yeah. and the fact that he is there to combat the darkness, not be the darkness. I know, I understand why a lot of Batman fans were like, I don't like that. Because that's traditionally the Batman that we've always had. Right. And that's where we start this movie. That's but more we're actually Superman seeing role. growth. Yeah, we're seeing growth in this, and that's the other thing. This is this version of Batman. You're not saying every version right, of Batman right. is this. You have a Batman here with Robert Pattinson who starts out the movie literally just hiding in shadows, doesn't take off the eyeliner, doesn't want to be seen in the real world, doesn't care about Bruce Wayne, doesn't care about the charity. He only wants to be this avenging angel and just punishing people, punishing himself at the right. same time. And there's actual character growth by the end of this movie, so he realizes that like he needs to be an actual hero to this city. Yeah. And uh, it, it, you know, I wasn't crazy about the Riddler. Paul Dano either very much did work for me or very much did mm. not work for me uh, in the role. Uh, but there was a lot about this movie. Colin Farrell, MVP oh, God, year, so, good. Oh, so good as the so Penguin. Good. I'm really, I know that they had Barry Keown in the movie and he's the Joker. I'm really hoping that they're not just going to do Joker for the second movie because it's like how many times it seems like they are doing do it. Though, but, but I mean, yeah. like how, maybe not, maybe not. Maybe, maybe the third one. Yeah, maybe, yeah. I, but it's, it's, I really love where they're taking this. Yeah. And like this, you, this whole direction of the Matt Reeves universe, I'm glad that it was not incorporated in the Right, because otherwise this universe would be, be alive. I know. Well, It'd what, be gone. What were your thoughts on the movie, John? Oh, I loved it. Yeah. I've seen it, what, four or five times Oh, now? wow. Uh, yeah, I mean, I and I, ha I, I like the extra 20 minutes at the end that people wanted to cut because they earned it. They earned it by doing the first two hours the way they did. Mm -hmm. I was 100% like, yeah, go ahead, go crazy with this whole battle sequence in an arena. Let's have fun. And I, I agree with you. That And, and that score? Oh, oh score's so, so good. I'm Michael so Chikino, yeah. Yeah. mad that Mondo sold out of the three discs, three LP set mm -hmm. with the images on it. It was sold out so fast. I had it in my cart and couldn't get it. And I, it's the only one I want to own. It's And it's so, I, I'm not a score whore. There are just certain scores that when they hit me, they hit me. Like Hans Zimmer's Man of Steel. This one, this score was just incredible with how it hit you. Something in the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. There's something just about it. But no, the portrayal, but Robert Pattinson taking on this role and giving you a whole new point of view. Matt Reeves' approach. It's the anti-Batman Batman movie, and it works. Why? Because yeah. as Jan said, we've already had those Batman movies. Let's explore him being a detective, and let's surround him with these yeah. fantastic actors like Jeffrey Wright, like Paul Dano, even though the boom stuff is where you start to drip away or pull away from him, and surround it. And Zoe Kravitz, I thought was great as Catwoman. Yeah. All of it, um, just all of it, the way they've construct they constructed that world. To show, and, and it connected to what we're going through. There is so much about what we're going through in our current world that I think that Batman spoke to. And I think all the films are now starting to wake up and deal with trauma. And certainly he deals with a lot of trauma, generational trauma, the loss of his parents. But beyond that, the betrayal of Alfred, what he sees in the betrayal of Alfred and Andy Serkis doing a fantastic yeah, job there again. So all of the stuff that he's going through are what people are now being more open to and are talking about more vocally in shows and podcasts and whatever. It understood that. And I think that's why a lot of people actually did love the movie. They connected to the journey of the character. Aside from him being Batman, Bruce Wayne is what we connected to. I think it's the best comic book movie of the year, for sure. Mm. Um, I think that it, it it absolutely hit on those levels. I did think it was a little long, but um, but I also think that it plays a lot better when you rewatch it at home. Mm -hmm. So I oh, agree yeah. with that as well. Um, I love the approach of Matt Reeves, uh, David Fincher style, yeah. and and the, 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 the as you said, John, the detective stuff was what I wanted to see from Batman. But I also like that the idea that we didn't have to start in year one. We've seen that already. Right. Year two. Yeah. And the fact that they emphasized that it was year two. And the idea, as you said, Dan, with the, that we he hasn't become Bruce Wayne yet. That's who he really is. He is that guy now. He's Batman. Yeah. But he just puts on a mask. But that's his the mask is Bruce Wayne. He yeah. hasn't developed that mask. And yet. he's right. and he's Batman for eighty percent of the movie. Yeah. Right. But I yeah. also love every Me too. other Batman movie, it's Val Kilmer, it's, Michael Keaton, Joe right. Clooney, eighty percent of the time, and then he goes and fights crime and he's Batman. In this movie, 
He's Batman. Yeah. They, and then they, when he has to be Bruce Wayne. Right. They go he through, takes the mask off. Yes. Yeah. They go through that. That how What kind of psyche is going on to someone to get into that place? That that's all they want to be in the idea. Mm -hmm. and, and again, and we've always seen Alfred and Bruce being on the same page. They're not on the same page in this right. movie. Not until they have to be. And they finally are. Um, at the It's funny because, as you guys said, the thing that I really loved about the movie was the David Fincher director approach. So everything leading up to the end was, for me... That was the thing, and mm -hmm. I and I get your points. I just that the, the we were we were so against the traditional Batman in this movie mm -hmm. that when we got to the traditional ending, I went, well, that seems a little out of place. And I can say, you know, where you're saying like it it they earned it. It's a Batman movie. I'm like, yeah, but this movie hasn't been a Batman movie mm -hmm. the whole time. I'd be with you if at the end of that thing he melted into the shadows and he's like, I'm yeah, a right, at the heart of Gotham. And, and I, instead, he's not. He's no, in no, no, broad daylight. Yes. He's helping people. And I think it's because the, of, and I think know, it's because yeah. of that that I went, okay, I love the yeah. movie and it's yeah. and it's like i said i started with it's the best comic movie of the year yeah. for sure um but and i can't wait for the second one and matt reads what he did when he took over the apes franchise which i thought mm. you know oh because i remember when so when good. rupert uh, was a wyatt right wyatt, yeah. and when he when he started i'm like why are they replacing that guy and i said rupert who you know after <laughs> matt reeves did it because it was he's just a, tr tr a tremendous filmmaker so uh, good choice there on 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 the batman all right so i'm gonna then now jump then and i'll go to if I'm going to go, I had something in, I think it was in TV. Is that where I wanted to go? Oh, yeah. I'm going to go in TV. Okay. And I'm going to go with uh, The Offer. Um, oh, man. Which The Offer to me was a show that nobody was 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 talking about. And then I started watching. You talk about Paramount Plus. Mm -hmm. And I started watching. It's the, the making of The Godfather and and Miles Teller in, in another role here. And I was, I was raving about this show. And it was just must-watch television for me. The week-to-week, -week, I think, is another very smart move that I wish more people would start, more streaming services would start doing week-to-week -week because it kept me and my wife, again, locked in. There's some tremendous performances. And Matthew Good, I've always been like, yeah, he's good. He is so good in this as uh, as Robert Evans. He is so, so good. Everybody is. With Dan Fogler, Miles Teller, um, uh, J uh, Juno Temple, the performances are just uh, Giovanni Ribisi, and I think that some people think that Giovanni Ribisi has a similar thing to what you guys were talking about with Tom Hanks, um, where he might seem a little cartoony. I didn't think so. I thought he played he played the gangsters uh, the gangster really well. Um, but this was a show that I think that it's an underrated show. There were not a lot of people talking about it. I don't know if you guys had an opportunity to watch it, but I just I just thought it was phenomenal. That's right up my alley. Did watch it. Didn't watch it, John. Did you see there's it? so much. There's yeah, so there's much. a lot. There is. There is. Uh, I was going to, because it's going to be dead January and February, so I, I'm going to be doing You're gonna reaction. You're going to love it. Because I'm going to do You're reaction stuff it. to watch in this. Yeah. And Severance. I haven't seen Severance or yeah. The Offer, yeah. and I've got to watch both of those uh, things and maybe do reaction videos to them because I I, I know uh, my friend Shannon on the Geek Buddies, he's he's been pounding me verbally about I hope going, so. about, yeah, about <laughs> I, I, as soon as I said it, I was like I, I was like I was like you gotta see the real sure like, hey, yeah. <laughs> he's like you gotta see the offer especially because I have seen you know I love the Godfather to P you know that yeah. I love the Godfather to pieces not three but one and two certainly and so the fact that it's about that story, and I've read books about the story, so to me, I, it's, it's it's insane that I it's haven't great. watched. So did you? So I'm going to stay there then for a second. Mm. Did, did you also say you didn't see Severance? No, it's another one that people say, "Oh, you got to watch it." Well, you let, watch it. let me stick it. there for a second too, because yeah, I just because re I just recently watched it, and I so Roxy Schreier's on the show normally every oh. Thursday, um, doing her TV picks, and so she has been talking about this. Um, Mark Ellis has been telling me how much I would love this show, and so I started watching this show uh, with my wife again a while ago, and she she bailed on it. And I was like, oh, I'll get back to it. And I started watching it again. And I tweeted out, I'm like, I don't know whatever it's done. I was, I'm bored out of my skull. It's like 14, 15 minutes into it. I'm like, I'm, I think I'm done. The first episode. First episode. Gotcha. And everybody's like, no, 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 stick with it. And I had just watched, uh, and had it been released this year, it would absolutely be on my list, but Dark on Netflix. Right. And I was so, I was coming off of a, uh, that high. And I'm like, I don't know, guys. And then by the end of one, I'm like, okay, I'm intrigued. And then it just gets you. It is such a smart show. It is so, um, it, it is different. Ben Stiller does a tremendous job. I'm not a Ben Stiller guy at all. Uh, I think directing wise, he's a good director, but I'm just not a fan of his. And I, I think he, he deserves, wow. he deserves the, the respect for this show in general. He's a producer on it. He's a director on it. Um, there's just so much going on from Christopher Walken, uh, and, and Totoro and, and, and shoot. And the girl plays Hattie, uh, her, her, 
shoot the main the main actress who I'd never heard of. There's so many new people coming out that I'm just so impressed by that I'm, we're discovering in television. That uh, Helly, not Hattie, Helly, and um, and there's there's just it's a great show. It's a phenomenal show. I can't wait for season two, and and I highly highly recommend it. So okay. that's two for me. Um, John, we'll go back to you here. <laughs> let's get a let's get some uh, we'll get some movies and movies. we'll start to wrap up. All right. Uh, b- 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 can we talk about uh, Woman King? Is, sure. that, is I, that possible? Yeah, I haven't seen that one yet. But really? Yeah, please, you know, I know, I know. You saw it, right? Yeah, yeah go ahead. I, saw it. I love this movie. Absolutely love this movie. I, I thought Viola Davis, I mean, Amanda Waller, what? This is what she's born to do. The leading a tribe like this, war, sorry, leading warriors like this into battle, being, being a symbol of good in her community. It's, it's, it's a microcosm of what she wants to be uh, for uh, the acting community, for her own community. And I love that they turn that into this movie. I know some people have have, have attacked it for its historical accuracy or inaccuracy, whatever. I understand because that. Because no Hollywood movie yeah. has ever been historically Braveheart is 100% inaccurate. inaccurate right. Yeah. All these people have Braveheart in their collection <laughs> complaining about the inaccuracy or Gladiator or whatever. But anyway. Um, it's a big difference between. Well, I mean, the guy doesn't die in real life <laughs> no, at the I end of Gladiator. Mean, uh, uh, the big difference on screen between those two movies, and I'll let the audience figure out what that is. <laughs> yeah, fair point. Um, but yeah, but this one just absolutely phenomenal performances. Lashana Lynch as well, just so good. And I, I started to hear some people talk about Lashana Lynch for best supporting actress. Mm. She's great in the movie. What they go through, tackling the idea of slavery, really kind of putting it in your face, not letting you walk away from it, not making you feel good about it, not trying to smooth that are out with you, but actually putting it out there. Then John Boyega, who I know a lot of people have been waiting for him to kind of do something else or bust out other than doing Finn. And Small Axe was great to see him in that as well. But to see him here, there's such a presence and a command to him that I'm like, yeah, you really d- did mess up not giving him more to do on the, on the sequel trilogy. Yeah. So let's give him more stuff down the road because the, the strength oh, that he great. has, the yeah. chemistry he's he has great. with Viola is great. And the journey, this idea of a young warrior being schooled by the older warrior, what they go through, what they have to confront, all of it. The And, and Gina prince Bythewood, who I'm always like a half in and half out on as a director because the old guard was okay. This is a much, much better film where you can see her vision, her approach, her strength yeah. as a as a filmmaker come through in such incredible way. So if you can set aside the inaccuracy, which may or may Who not be that, yeah. in the historical so, stuff, which some people have dinged it for, I think you're in for a hell of a movie and a great treat and a surprising one at that. Yeah, point. I have that screener. I'm about to watch it. My, my, I had two it's screenings. Telling. No, no, I, I, it was one of my lists. I had two screenings for the... Uh, for it, and my my wife got sick on one of them, and then my kids got sick on the other one. And I was like, "Are you kidding me?" And then so I finally I do have it. It's on, I have like a few movies that I'm waiting to see, and that's one of the ones on my list. I got I wanted to get to Pinocchio. I wanted to get through these ones, and so but I've heard I've heard very similar things. I don't know where you where you stand. No, on. I, I enjoyed it. I really it's not like on my best of list, yeah. but I really liked the movie. Um, it was shocking how many historical experts uh, yeah, revealed themselves on, yeah. when this movie came yeah. out. <laughs> Uh, and you know, and, and I don't want to, I don't want to discount that, but at the same time, just looking at the tone and tenor of the conversation, it seemed like a lot of people sort of getting upset on behalf of. Yeah, uh, I think as it's a matter of to, how how they bring it up, right? Right. Yeah, well, it's brought up I think to every history the movie. It's yeah, brought, it's, right. It's, that's it's, a difference. We see this thing all the time. Right. Miss Marvel was the same thing. Yeah. yeah. People, it, it, there's a common thread, and I'll, you know, the yeah. math is not hard to do. Right. Uh, but at the, you know, so I don't want to discount that, uh, but I also think at the same time. That is a conversation that should be had in parallel with the actual movie itself, which I thought was incredibly well made. Really strong performances all around. The filmmaking itself, the action was really, really well executed. And I think that it all kind of got swallowed by this, I think, intentionally larger conversation that was started about it when the reality is that there is almost no movie in Hollywood ever made that is based on history there are many, many, many movies that mm-hmm. are twice as historically inaccurate as this one sure. that were hailed, and it was never brought up. Right. Best Picture. Uh, yeah. The, yeah, yeah, it's it's just like that is that is nothing new, and it, it was very curious to me that this movie specifically was single. That was out the, of was the that one. the was that the major criticism on it? Yeah, okay, that, that, that was it. Was, okay, well, yeah. Okay. I, I reviewed the movie, and it, it's I, I see this a lot where. I'll review a movie or I'll talk about something and you know, the comments will go a certain way, a certain way. And then there's a corner mm. that says something yeah. and then it 
it's spread. And then I just get 85 parents about that, that come to me yeah, yeah, and yeah. tell me the same thing that obviously somebody else right, that they right, listened to right, said. Right. And so then they go out and it, then they, it's, you know, yeah. it, it just spreads like. Sometimes, it's like, look, look, I was just mentioning yeah. the offer, right? There's yeah, a yeah. lot inside the offer that was fabricated. Yeah, yeah. tons yeah. of it. Yeah. I don't, this is how I watch stuff. I don't give a shit. It's like, it's like, okay, it's certain things. If I want to find out how it all really went down, I'll read a history. I'll watch a documentary. I'll watch a documentary. Yeah. Um, so I I want to see a good movie, as long as you know, some of the stuff, like this particular thing happened, this particular thing happened. Like when Rome, when we watched Rome back yeah, in the yeah, day. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. a, lot, God, a, lot of a lot of stuff that was, yeah. you know, maybe accurate, maybe not accurate. Who the hell knows? But I, I'm glad it's both on both your, well, it's on your list, or, or that we talked about It's here. on my list to talk about. Yeah, yeah. and I so. I don't know if it's going to make my top 10. Yeah, so we'll might, see. But that's a good really one. Enjoy that's it. a good it's one a really well-made movie right. particular. Um, yeah. All right, let's, let's see. So we're about to wrap up pretty quick here but dan what anything else inside of movies that you want to hit or do you want to hit on anything tv do you want to do maybe this one uh yeah oh yeah stranger things four yeah Let's i just it. want to briefly Ooh. talk about it you're talking about the week to week thing uh, yeah like yeah. that's one thing that i don't understand with netflix is i feel like they're committed to that binge model yep every season of stranger things it feels like if they would release it week to week it be would the be the number one thing yep. that everyone was talking that's about true. for two months straight so yep. the way that it is now People, it, it's it's it, it, people talk about it for a weekend, yeah, and then it's gone because everybody watches it yeah. at the same time. I really liked this last season, um, Sadie Sink. Mm. I would not have projected that she would be maybe. I would have said like before this season, oh, Millie Bobby Brown's going to be the biggest right, star right. out of all of them, and she's great. Sadie Sink, mm -hmm. this and the whale, yeah, and 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 the, the other work that she's done, she, she's got some talent, and yep. she really owned this season, particularly the first half sure of the did. season, yeah. and. I wasn't really sure about, and I'll see what they do in this next season, the whole idea of like constructing this big bad that was mm -hmm. kind of behind mm -hmm. everything. But at the same time, Vecna was such a great character, sure. yeah. such a great villain. Yeah. Um, I saw the big twist coming that didn't really surprise me that much, and I think maybe that kind of tainted my initial thought sure. on that whole thing. So I was like, well, it's, it's the guy that, it's the guy that's a big part of the show that nobody's talking about. Right. Like, obviously, right. that, that's, I mean, that's, um, but the way that they are building this road and I think it's a good idea that it's actually ending next mm -hmm. season because you can only imperil Hawkins so many times. Yeah. Uh, but there was a lot of growth in this, and it wasn't just more of the same thing. It went to such an emotional place and such a deep place, and I swear to God, if they don't give Will Byers something to actually do <laughs> next season... <laughs> They get a haircut. Teasing, you can do that. You know, I mean, they keep teasing that yeah. he's got all of this emotional, and I mean, he's been through more on this show than any he other. He did a character. lot of steering in this one, didn't he? If if they turn him in season five into just the kid who has the hair yeah. stand up on the back of his neck and go like, "Guys, Vecna's close by," like for right. the love of God. Give this character something. Yeah. Stop hinting and 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 you know, like, oh, I think based on this, like. Let's de it's it's as far past time right. that we actually yeah, develop his character, and I hope that he's not just in season five. I think he should be the crucial part, the yeah. thing around which season five completely pivots. But I agree with you tremendously that I've been I've been screaming at the mountaintop on this. The Netflix binge model needs to go because by the because the, what it's they it's outdated it's super outdated because they, there was no competition when they were doing it before, so it was like a fun thing to do because. That's what everyone was talking about. And I'll talk about it for a little bit. But when you have the, like, you would have, if, if we just talked about how Andor had to, like, build up, mm. if Andor comes out on a binge model, dead. Dead. Because it, on one, oh, and now I know people are, whoa, but then to be able to catch up in, in, in 12 episodes. Yeah, but like Dan said, you're going to talk about it for a couple weeks and then it's gone. That water cooler conversation is crucial in television. And yeah. it's such, it's especially, when you're talking about Stranger Things, because this was one that, like, to me, this is on par with the first season. Yeah. I thought it was there. so good in the way that they did it. Now, I understand that it would probably be if they were going to do a, bin, a a week to week, they couldn't have released it like this because the second half was like a an hour and was like a two and a half two hour and a half movie. Hour movie yeah. Right. So they did it that particular way. So this is a different circumstance. But what they did and the way that they brought the kids together, and I and I think that this is the one thing that we were on a disagreement with because I said, well, I watched your reviews on this, um, that I actually liked that the kids spent so much time away from each other. I yeah you were you were on the other yeah, side of that I, of, but yeah. I liked it because it reminded me of like Empire Strikes Back or reminded me of these mm. things of where the, the the these characters are on this these other adventures so when they finally come back together in this in the moment where it all counts it just they've all been on their separate things and it allows you to, and I think one of the reasons that they did it also was COVID uh, right. certain mm. things that they had to do it. they had to stop and start and yeah. I think if they hadn't done it before. 
But they already did that. They had that big arc in right. season yeah. two or three sure. with Eleven where she was gone the whole time and then right. she comes back. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. I think it's and really the whole just, Russian thing. And then last that. season with, like, you know, he had the kids in the mall and the kids over here. And yeah. Yeah, I understand. They, just keep, they, they, they seem to I keep understand. You know, and going I think that it, it. And I think that I just it just worked for me on that particular level. But I think that the way that they did it and the writing was so good overall because I think that I liked, I think for me it's, it's I don't I might rank four just slightly over one. I'll probably go four, one, um, three, two. It's easily in the top. Yeah. yeah. But imagine the Kate Bush episode. Oh, yeah. If that had been a week. week to week, yeah. 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 That entire week. I mean, it, it, it already was. Yeah, the song. It already yeah. was all anybody was talking right. about. But imagine if that was the whole week totally. leading up to that next yeah, episode. Yeah, no, I know. You're, you're just preaching to the choir in this it's, one. John, what did you think uh, of the show? Uh, oh, oh, I loved it. Yeah. I, and I agree with you. I think it's on par, if not better, than season one. And you might be like, well, you, you might criticize that because people might say like oh well we don't get to four if we don't get these other three right. and that's fair it's fair but i i think this season was so well done and i'm in the middle between you guys i think a little bit in that i liked that they spread them out i think the issue is the stories weren't as strong separately yeah. for each yeah. of them and i think that's where the complaint comes because i i saw some people complain about the russia thing i loved the russia thing with david harbour and winona Ryder and the dude from game of thrones i enjoyed that storyline the will buyer stuff i hate to break it to you you're talking about four and one what's the big commonality Will isn't in a lot of it. And I'll tell you why. Because he's not that strong of an actor. And I'm telling you, that's why they've limited... No, Snap just TikToks about you. I'm saying... I'm saying... I mean, fine. Fine, just don't sign in my DMs. But I'm, I'm, I'm saying this is the Deep truth. Cut. Damn, for those that get it. But, like, this is the thing. And this is the honest truth. you got to tell the truth about things. And this is... I think he's not that strong of an actor. I think that's why they haven't built seasons around him. And I think we're going to see in season five. And I see already the Stranger Things fans coming after you. Fine. But we'll see in season five what they do. But I think... You, you can't unearth Sadie Sink and not give her a massive amount to do or Millie Bobby Brown. Even Finn is a little bit of behind. I mean, those are the two strongest actors aside from David Harbour for me in the whole series. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason they run run with those two ladies because they're fantastic actresses. And so we're going to see, but everything, uh, Eddie, I mean, all of it. Oh, Eddie was great. I mean, just the the visuals of him up top of the trailer, all of that was so great. great. Like, just like Peacemaker was like an 80s heavy metal song come to life for uh, 10 episodes, this is the same thing from a younger age. And I loved that and enjoyed the hell out of it. And they, they, the Duffers, they found their stride, taking their time, doing it their way. And I agree, but I agree with you guys. Like we've got to, Netflix has got to figure this out in terms of how they release this uh, and it may be because they don't want it to overwhelm all the other stuff they have coming down the road. Maybe, but, Maybe. It, but most but of it's, it's not good. It, no, no, I agree. I they don't think so, yeah, but I agree with should, you. Should, yeah. All right, look. So uh, here's we're winding down. This is the end of it. So okay. what we're going to do is um, I'll pick one more. I mean, you guys pick pick one more that you want to okay. do, whether it's TV or movie. Just think about it. And then what we'll do is we're going to show Carbon Health's picks, and then we'll just mm. mention some of the other ones that we um, – that we had that I we did that we didn't, didn't mention. Insult anything oh my carbon gosh, health carbon picks. health! I know, no, no. Let's see. So let's see. So I'm gonna go one more. John's not gonna be on this page, but I'm gonna go movies, and I'm gonna go with the Fablemans. Um, oh. I just watched the Fablemans recently. Oof. I thought I no, I thought it was tremendous. I thought it was one of Spielberg's best movies in quite a while. Um, the struggle that, in general, of what you know, in the idea of what he was able to do, and you look at this journey from him and his mom but the idea of just growing up in, in again we talk about relatability and stuff too to him i don't know what it was like growing up as a latino i don't know what it was like mm. growing up as a jewish man uh, or a jewish person in general growing up but the the showing this and bringing this in uh, to this particular environment but also latching into love because it could it, it got heavy at points the movie itself but it also latched into this love of a of a passion that you have and being able to in this great scene that uh, he has with Judd Hirsch where you know it's just this amazing scene where where it's like you've got that fire it's like go for this it's like it reminds me of the Bronx Tale the wasted talent there's so many times that people I always think about this somewhere you know like the the best if you think about Muhammad Ali, or you think about um, uh, uh, Serena Williams, you think about all these people that have made it inside their athletic fields, or in general, you think about, like uh, you were just mentioning before with Cate Blanchett. Mm -hmm. There's somebody out there, there's somebody out there that was the best boxer or the best Mm. actress or the best scientist in the world Mm -hmm. and never explored it. And they were the best. They could have been the GOAT, but they never explored it. And that is what I loved about this movie. I love the idea of this, these different things going maneuvering. And I, I would agree, and I don't know if this is where you land on some of the two. I think, it, you know, again, probably a little longer 
in the tooth. Um, yeah. But uh, but overall, I thought it was a fantastic movie. I know kind of your thoughts on this. I want to talk to the Spielberg <laughs> fan here. Um, what, I'm what, a Spielberg what, fan. But the, yeah, but but you know, uh, the guy walked oh, out to. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Steven what, so, but but where where'd you land on the Fablements? <laughs> Um, if, if the whole movie had been as great as that scene with Judd Hirsch, then yeah. it would have been one of my favorite movies of the year. Okay. That was one of my, that was, I'm not usually a, an advocate for an actor getting nominated for an Academy Award for one scene. Judd Hirsch should be. Yeah. He was that good. Um, I, I thought it was okay. Okay. I thought it had some really deep issues when it worked for me. It really, 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 yeah. really worked. Um, I just thought that it was a bit, like I said, it was kind of like listening to someone else tell you a story and you're like, uh-huh. Okay. I, it's you know um, I love the John Ford stuff but that was great. that was a great I love that John movie. Ford stuff so yeah. I think yeah. a big thing for me and a big reason and it's crucial to the movie is that um, Michelle Williams' performance didn't work for me really so it was a little I, over I, top I, I, I thought it was a little I understood what she was going for and I understand why it works mm. for some people but it didn't work for me and that's such a central part of the movie that when you have a performance like that that doesn't work for you it sort of drags the whole movie down Gabriel LaBelle though. Who played the kid? The you, kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he great. He was great. He yes. was great. John, you hated this movie once. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I was just disappointed by it. I really was because I held off on this until I had an afternoon with nothing else going on to really, really sink my teeth into it. And an hour in, I was like, "I'm dying. I'm dying." And I agree with you 100. percent Michelle Williams. I don't know what she's doing. It's not anything that makes any sense to me. That people are like, "This. She should be nominated. She should win Best Actress." This. <laughs> It just was driving me insane, not because she's a person going through trauma or is unstable or all this kind of stuff, which was the point of the movie. I It's because it wasn't believable. It was caricature instead of actually um, really lived in hmm. a, a, a layered performance, which Michelle Williams has done multiple times. She's one of the best actresses working today. I think that was another part of my disappointment in this. I just didn't feel that. And I like the kid. He was good. And certainly there are moments. What I think the film messed up in, in my personal opinion, is if you don't know the Steven Spielberg story, you, this, you, you're this you not bringing that to the movie, and they're just throwing things at you. Oh, yeah. uh, this is happening. Oh, and this is happening. And then this is happening. As Dan just eloquently said, I haven't heard it placed that way. It's perfect what Dan said. Someone else is telling you the story, and they're jumping from thing to thing instead of laying the foundation with these mm. characters. It's the same way I felt about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. At the end, what happens at the end is not earned in any way, shape, or form. It's only earned if you know the story of what they end up doing yeah. to Sharon Tate. But if you don't know it, then the film makes no sense, and they're essentially committing murder in such horrible ways to these people because they haven't done the thing that you think they're going to do, that you know they're going to do in the in the real world. So to me, it doesn't earn, and I felt that way about the film. It doesn't earn the emotional moments, but the Judd Hirsch scene works. Well, I'm sorry to fart in the car on the way to the restaurant. <laughs> uh, no, we're the farters. <laughs> We're the farters, John and I. Yeah. The right. car smells the, great. That's good. And well, you John guys can't eat the, the restaurant. All right, the David so. Lynch scene is great. I mean, the John Ford scene. If you haven't seen the don't TikTok. Start, don't start giving me napkins. I'm just now. saying. All right, if you so. haven't seen the TikTok where they compare Steven Spielberg telling the story to what goes on oh, in the yeah. scene, incredible. Well, I yeah. loved it. What's next? <laughs> what do you, so, you got, let's go. Where let's do you want to go? go? You, you're going to finish up. Your let's last. Let's talk about Sandman. All right, Sandman. Please, let's talk about that. We're talking about Netflix. We already talked about Hustle. Oh, oh, I, I thought Sandman was, I mean, talk about a bar that you have to cross or yep. you have to clear. I am a massive Sandman fan. My fellow geek buddy, Michael Vogel, talked me into watch, uh, reading Who? those things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I read them, and I was blown away by them. Like 10 years ago, 15 years ago, dove into all of them, read all of them. Um, and so when they announced they were going to do a series, I'm like, oh, man, I don't know. Please don't mess this up and blah, blah, blah. Because Stardust is a fine movie, but it's not great. And so I'm like, okay, Neil Gaiman stuff is really, really tough to adapt, especially something that's deep and complex and nuanced. And you can't have John Constantine be a part of it? Okay. But it 100% worked for me. Even the supplemental episode really worked for me. The visuals here are stunning. Yeah. I mean, yeah, gorgeous. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. The acting here is really well done. I thought it's great to see Jenna Coleman as Johanna Constantine. She was great. The journey we're going on with Dream and what he's confronting with death with his sister, everything that he is going through and the different stories. Um, David Thewlis' story in the yeah. diner. My God. Gwendolyn a, Christie, man. Yeah, Gwendolyn Christie. Yeah. She is so good as, as, as a, a Lucifer. All of it just worked so well for me, and they actually translated what this story was about onto screen, and it worked. All top to bottom, it worked. They didn't skimp. They didn't change too much. 
They dived into everything and they told them as separate stories that were interconnected but could stand on their own. Man, I thought it was genius. Did you watch this one? No. Okay. So for me, Sam, and I'm I need to finish it. And I was I had gotten I think I'm like six I know. I think I'm like six episodes into it from where I was. I was watching it. We went to Tampa and it and it, at the time and it just premiered and I watched it the first two. I loved it and I started and I and I loved everything that I watched. It's just one of those things that I watched and it was what we were just talking about. The problem was it all dropped that day oh, yeah, yeah. in in Florida and I was and I had it's all a lot this, to take in at once but it was also yeah. from what we do in a matter of what we were covering and I wanted to cover it and I wanted to cover it in time and I was like you know what I missed the boat right nobody's talking about it anymore yeah, right now be, no, they're not searching for it anymore so I'm gonna get back to it because I really love the show I just haven't gotten back to it I need to get back to it because there's nothing that you said that I was mm -hmm. like, nah, I don't know about that. It was great. And the other thing with Gwendolyn Christie, which we're not going to go into depth with because we missed the boat, um, Wednesday is another one. Oh, yeah. My daughter is obsessed with the show. And I, everyone's telling me I need to watch the, the show. The viewership numbers on that show are bananas. Dude, yeah. it's a really good show. It's And it's Tim Burton's best work in years. years. In oh, years. Man. It's a really good show. And Gwendolyn Christie, but, I mean, Jenna, Jenna Ortega is <laughs> is the is the, the reason why you watch that show for sure. But, um, but yeah, Sandman was just um, was was something that I – and you said visuals. I What I, what I want to do, we finally set the surround sound back here and everything too. I'm going to – Shut the lights off. Finish it. Watch it on the big TV, and um, but it's a great pick. But Dan, you're gonna you're gonna end us, man. What do you what do you got for us? I'm gonna end this the way that uh, I'm sure everybody wants us to end this. A quick uh, acknowledgement of international film. Uh, so <laughs> oh yeah, go ahead. Two right. movies quickly. I want sure. to acknowledge. Uh, Decision to leave okay. from Park Chan Wook. Um, oh, one that. of the most beautiful films, maybe the best cinematography of the year. It's up there. Okay, and mm -hmm. it's a it's a detective story, but it's also kind of a story about obsession and love, and uh, it's a mystery. Um, it's just I, I I saw it and I liked it, and then I just kept thinking about it, kept thinking about it, sure. kept thinking about it. And there's an interesting construction with the movie where you'll have two characters that are in different places, but they'll put the two characters in the same space, and it, it's just. Really, mm. kind of uh, an interesting riff. I mean, you wouldn't. Park Chan Wook's an incredible director, yeah. but like riffing with the language of cinema, that was really interesting. Okay. And then, international sensation, and I'm glad that it's actually getting Academy Award um, uh, consideration. RRR. Oh right, right. I still haven't seen it. Yet. I know. I still people kept saying, it, "Go see it. Go see it. Go see it. Go see it." Uh, it didn't play that long, you know, where I yeah. was because you still know, on Netflix. It, it, uh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, unless it, unless they pulled it off. No, um, no, it's still on. Which okay. I'm shocked that it's not in the chart every week, right. week after week. Right. Uh, people kept saying, "Go see it." It was. I only had a couple weeks to see it in theaters, and I didn't get a chance to see it. And I finally one night we had a free night. I'm like, "Hey, people keep saying R R." I was like, "I'm just gonna see it." Like, geez, like I just gotta see it so people will stop telling me I have to watch it. Incredible. Okay, good. Like, gotta, there are so many it. people that would be like, oh, it's a three-hour movie from India. I'm not going to like that. Trust me. You are. Yeah. Because <laughs> it is because because film is 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 universal. And it is a story about friendship. It's a, it's a historical drama. Yeah. It's an action movie. It's a crime movie. It's a, it's a comedy. It's wait, a musical. Wait, 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 Dan. It's... How accurate is it if it's a story? <laughs> <laughs> Truth. Exactly. Um, it, it, there's, there's so much in it yeah but it is just like i saw it and it's just like i've never seen anybody do this and yeah. a lot of it is because okay. i'm not as familiar with indian cinema and really a lot of international cinema as i should be but a lot of it is just because this is one of the most singular movies that you're going to see i'm glad you brought that up i love yeah, yeah. love 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 i'm glad All right. yeah good. did you watch it yet no yeah see same so I'm, I'm with you i was like uh would you trust me? Yeah. Trust right. me. You're I'm, gonna you're Jeffy gonna Kawhi, get thirty minutes into it, and you're it, gonna so. be like, you're gonna get thirty minutes into it, and the title card's gonna drop, and you're like, what? That was <laughs> so, just the, that was just the <laughs> prologue. So I got to give credit where credit's due. Yeah. When this movie, like, it had maybe dropped three hours, and yeah. then Frankie Numbers said, twenty six eight. Is if there's ever a movie you need to see, it's this one. Yeah. Fast forward six wow. months later, I still haven't watched it, right? And <laughs> it's nothing against Frank. It just, I was like, I never got a chance. To, and it has nothing to do with the subtitles. And all that. I'm on a subtitle kick right now. Like I said, I just yeah. watched all of Dark like like mm. that. Um, but I want to, uh, I do want to check it out. I want to see it. I want to, and and people said just like amazing action. Like, like The Raid's one of my favorite. That's a oh, subtitle. Yeah. That's so good. Film to, too. Yeah, and I, I just, I have to see this movie. And I'm glad you brought it up because it is one that, constantly gets recommended and probably win best best film right you think in, uh, like for, best, uh, for no is it for, the oscars not best for best for best uh isn't it best foreign oh, film? i believe yeah, i believe it is up for best international film right. and i mean consideration but the thing yeah. is there's so like i said decision to leave is also a great movie yeah. there are some yeah. all, great international films all quiet there. on the western front yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. i've been started and, that one and i don't know how they view bardo but we haven't mentioned that and to me bardo is 
in my top 10 of the year. And that's also a fantastic exploration of a director. Yeah. I'm going to take that over Fablemans any day. And what he goes through, international film, subtitles as well, but a fantastic image wise, imagery wise, a fantastic film that is as good as eight and a half, Fellini's yeah. eight and a half, in my opinion. Yeah, you know, yeah I you think, know, yeah. Oh, sorry, I was going to say, you would say that because RRR is in line for even maybe a Best Picture nomination, mm -hmm. that it would be a shoe in for Best International Feature, but Pan's Labyrinth. Right, I believe right, was right, in right. the same situation yeah. where they're like, "Oh well, it's it's up for the you know best," and it didn't win it. Right, so it's you never know. It's gonna be interesting. I right, look, yeah. that was that it's was good thing. there was a lot of great stuff there too. And before we're gonna go, I'm gonna tell you as we mentioned, and you've seen the whole entire show. Carbon Health sponsoring the show. They also sent in their their picks. Ooh. So we're Ooh. gonna tell you here are the picks. Right. Carbon Health best of 2022. The Bear. I and, uh, see now that. that is a television show everyone starts mm -hmm. is talking about, and I start. I'm going to start that one for sure. Um, Winning time, which also oh, was on John's list that we didn't was. get a chance to talk so about. Under the banner of heaven so is great. another one that Roxy talks about all the time, and I'm so glad they put Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers on there. What yeah. a fantastic film that was! So I had funny. so much fun with that movie. I loved it. I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was hilarious, and it was it was just a, a pleasant surprise. Mm. Um, I'm going to just tell you guys some of the movies and TV shows that we missed um, that were that were we just didn't get a chance to mention those would have been a six hour show yep. Wakanda Forever Prey Bardo I don't know why Dan put Halloween I, ends no, on you, said, you didn't say best you said the ones you wanted to discuss <laughs> that's fine, that's it's fine. Not, I just a really interesting movie to discuss <laughs> oh man Decision to Leave is on okay we did that one um, we talked yeah about same thing Disney, Pin Pinocchio. Pinocchio no one wants to discuss that <laughs> yeah. the bad Disney one Reacher Reacher's great yeah. yeah on TV Barbarian The Adam Project The Fallout Jackass Forever Puss in Boots after Yang, Turning Red, The Lost City, Sonic 2, The Northman, love that one, The Black love Phone, it. Marcel yeah. the Shell with Shoes On, really it's sweet really film, yeah. Super Pets, and then, uh, of course, Chip and Dale, which we just mentioned. TV, Tulsa King. Yes. Yeah, I'm bummed we missed that one. Uh, a Abbott Elementary, John partially ta uh, talked it's about. It's so good. Second the, the, drop the Dropout, Winning Time, which you just mentioned, Under the Banner of Heaven, The Sandman, okay, we hit that. Tar, um, Let's see Rings where else. Power. Rings of Power, Moon Knight. I loved Moon Knight. Yeah, me too. I didn't like the finale, but I liked I mm. liked the penultimate for sure. Uh, the Offer, Pan and Tommy, and The Boys season three, which oh, I think is one of the best shows. So good. Uh, yeah. of Pam and Tommy was also really really, really good. Yeah. Really yeah, guys, we did it. We, we did. did it. We did a full list. That was the best of 2022. I got to thank both. Uh, John and Dan for joining us. They both have very, very great YouTube channels. If you haven't oh. had an opportunity to check them out, John, where can everybody find you, my man? Uh, at the Roca says on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. The Outlaw Nation on Twitch and my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash John Roca says, or just type in Outlaw Nation to John Roca and it'll come up and uh, come and hang out with us for God's sakes. Yeah. Dan, you've been doing the thing for a little bit now. Where are you? Uh, Dan Merle Movies on YouTube. I am on Instagram. Learning how to use Instagram. Yes, yeah. you are. I'm taking a little break from the other places. And uh, so if at Merle Dan on Instagram <laughs> as I try to learn that new platform. And um, yeah, and Patreon. Patreon.com slash Dan Merle. Oh, we can talk on Patreon. Patreon.com slash John Roca. There you go. There you go. So, <laughs> yeah, same. So uh, once again, guys, if you're brand new to the channel and you haven't been here before, do me a favor and subscribe. It was a great conversation that we had. I want to thank Carbon Health once again for sponsoring the episode. Head on over it. Guys, you mentioned your Patreon. Patreon.com slash The Big Thing Show. We have tons of things that we're doing over there right now. We hope you join us. We got the, the Big Thing logo we got some other things we got the really classy farts on my brand that's another one up there that's up there now it's a pretty amazing get that for anybody in your life for sure i'm gonna give it to dan and john for their whole fableman's take <laughs> um and other than that guys i really appreciate you joining us i'm gonna I, I at this point no i do not have my best of list i'm gonna have my best of my top 10 list i'm gonna have my top 10 shows i'm gonna have my top 10 uh, most anticipated all that's coming out really really soon so make sure you check it out Thanks again to all of you guys. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. I hope you had a wonderful Hanukkah. I hope you had a wonderful Kwanzaa. All of them. And I hope that you have a great new year. We'll see you guys soon. Thanks to John and Dan. Peace out, Mother Refs.